Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, we'll be playing through a full three-player game of Shiver Me Timbers. Now, I will be teaching the rules to this game while we're playing it, and I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, so that if I make any mistakes, I can then put corrections on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now, what's going on in this game is each player is in charge of a pirate ship in the Caribbean, and there are a variety of different life goals that they can be heading towards to get a bunch of points and also to end the game. Now, they might find themselves buying or stealing resources to then sail around and sell those for a profit. They can then use that money to upgrade their ship sailing speed, cargo capacity, or their strength in their guns, and they can use those guns to fight merchant ships as well as their opponents. Now, they can do a variety of other things, including searching for buried treasure, summoning massive sea monsters that they can then fight, as well as following a variety of different missions, and I will explain all of these things while we are playing it. Uh, but before we jump in, I would like to mention that this game is being funded through Kickstarter, and that if you enjoy this video, you please consider clicking the like button down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Now, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that, including voting on a couple of the videos that I make each month. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up for our three different players. Now, it is worth noting that this is a prototype version of the game, so the art and components are not necessarily what will be in the final retail version. Now we are going to play the game from the perspective of the blue player right over here, and our ship is over there on Port Royal. Now as part of setup, every player simultaneously chose a starting port. Uh, we are in Port Royal, it looks like the green player is in La Juanita, and down here we can see the yellow player is in Sao Tome. Now as a result of picking our origin locations, we will all get bonuses. For Port Royal, it looks like we get two cards that can either be two treasure, two missions, or one and one. Now, I've decided to go with one and one, so we have some rumors of a ship and a bottle treasure, and we have a mission from the governor uh, trying to boost the sugar trade. Now, down here, we can see that the green player started on La Juanita, and the bonus for them is they just have two sugar on their ship already. Now, if we look over to their ship, we can see that it is stored right here. Now, you actually store these resources with these wheels that can be spun around. So uh, everybody starts with the ability to hold three things. They've spun these two over to the white side, which matches with sugar, and then the black side is for empty cargo. Now, at the same time as everybody was choosing an origin location, they also got to choose a talent. Now, we have decided to go with Keen Eyes right here, and that says that we gain one strength whenever we search for treasure. This is part of the reason why I wanted to start in Port Royal, because we now have a treasure to start off with. Now, over here, the green player has Haggler. Now, this says that for the rest of the game, they gain 200 extra gold every time they take a sell action. Now, if we look down here to the yellow player, we can see that they start with two cocoa in their storage on their ship, and their talent is a navigator. This says that they have plus one speed when traveling for the rest of the game. Now, while we are choosing our origin and our talent, we also had to pick our life goals for the game. Now, at the start of the game, we dealt out one more of these life goals than the number of players, which is why we have four of them out here. And the options for this game are uh, Tomb Raider. It says uh, hide three treasures inside of your chest. Over here, we have Scourge of the Seven Seas. It says to uh, defeat seven ships. Those can be uh, non-player merchant ships or they could be your opponent's ships. Down here, we have Big Game Hunter, and this says uh, hunt down the Kraken and the Sea Serpent. And finally, we have the King's Hand, and it says you have to fulfill seven missions for the governor. Now, all four of these goals are active and available for all four players in the game. The first player to achieve each one gets to put a token down here, and that will be worth 10 points at the end of the game, and everyone else will put a token down here for five. Whenever you see this wax seal symbol, that is victory points. And at the start of the game, we all got to choose two of these to be our special life goals. Now, we have decided to go with Tomb Raider up here, as well as the King's Hand. And what this means is, at the end of the game, we will get five extra points, as you can see on the back here, if we have achieved each one of these. So we could do other things as well, but we are somewhat motivated to try and get a bunch of treasure and put three of it in our chest, as well as trying to complete seven missions. Now, before we move on, I would like to point out that there are more life goals than the ones that we are specifically playing with. Uh, for instance, we could have had the Brigand, and now that would happen as soon as somebody defeats two of the fortresses, and they are much harder to defeat than the merchant ships and the players. Uh, the next one is Family Man. Uh, this one you would achieve if you rescued three of your lost relatives, which you can do uh, by doing a variety of things throughout the game. And the last one down here is El Dorado, and you can achieve this one by hiding 7,000 gold inside your chest. 
Now, technically, you're supposed to put these secret gold tokens into your treasure chest so that you can then pull them out and score them at the end of the game. But I think I'm going to leave them face up right here just so that we can continually remember which ones uh, we're trying to go for. Obviously, our opponents have put theirs inside of their chests here, so we do not know necessarily what they are trying to go for. Now, the last thing that I'd like to quickly mention before we start playing is that we built this map up collectively as part of setup. Now, you'll see that some of these pieces are large, straight pieces like that, and then other ones are tiny sections like this one right here. And there are actually ways that these uh, sea lanes can change as the game goes on, but this is going to be the starting layout for us. Okay, let's now begin playing the game, and we can begin things off over here. Now, on a player's turn, they have three actions to spend, and there are ten different options that they can choose from, although not all of them are always available based on the player's situation. Now, at the moment, we are in Port Royal, and if we look down here, we can see this banner is associated with that location. Now, every one of the islands has one of these banners, and normally you can stand it up like this with a little stand right there, but I'm going to lay it flat for the purposes of this video. Now, this banner shows us many of the things that we can do as an action in Port Royal. For instance, we can draw another mission. We could also sell uh, any different types of good for 300 gold each. We could also sell treasure to Port Royal, although we haven't actually found any yet. Down here, this says we could spend an action to upgrade our ship, and we also could spend an action to learn about new treasures to find. Now, there are a couple other things we could do, including trying to raid this fortress that is currently at Port Royal, but that's probably not a good idea considering these fortresses usually have a strength of eight or so, and right now we have a strength of three. Now, we know that because if we look at our ship, we can see that it has a gun right on the prow right there, and then we have a gun stuck in the side there, and then another one right over there. Every player starts with a strength of three, and you can never go under a strength of one because obviously this gun is permanently stuck to our ship. So three is significantly less than eight or nine, which we won't even know what this is until we flip it over. So let's definitely not try to do that at this point in the game. And another option available to us is we can simply move. So traveling lets us go along these waterways along here, and the amount that we can travel for each action is uh, shown by the number of skulls on our sails. So we can see that we have two skulls there and one right here. So we have a travel speed of three. And then every single round, we will reveal a wind marker. And we can see that this round, the one that's up on top says zero. Now, this means that our speed is currently three. It was not modified, but this could make it go up or down depending on what gets flipped over. Now, I think what we should do for our first action is this top option right here where we can pick up another mission. Now, the reason for that is because even though we start with one of these, I think it does make sense to maybe get another one because these missions can be achieved as we are going about the map doing a variety of other things. For instance, the mission that we started with right here says boosting the sugar trade. It says that it's a secret task. We can see this eyeball with a slash there means technically it should be face down so our opponents don't know what it is. And then it says that we have to deliver two sugar to Isla Obscura. Now, we don't currently have anything on our ship. We can see the three black slots right over there. But as a re reward for doing this, we would get one victory point at the end of the game and we could do an upgrade on our ship or we could just get a thousand gold, which is also pretty good. Now, uh, normally, if you have a, a non-secret objective with a regular eyeball, then you cannot take any new ones until you have fulfilled it. But since this one is secret, then we can spend our first action to draw another one, and then we can maybe work on both of these missions at the same time. Now, it's a free action to actually uh, turn this in once we meet the uh, requirements for it, so I think this is a good move for us. And the way this works is we are going to draw three cards from the top of this and then choose one of them. So let's take a look at our options right here. This first one says test of agility. It says that we need to defeat the opponent who has the highest speed. We have a plus one when we try to board their ship. And as a reward, we get two ship upgrades. Uh, those upgrades might increase our speed, our cargo capacity, or our guns, which increases our strength. Uh, the next option right here says Tidings Isla Obscura. It says we have to travel to Isla Obscura and reach that island by the end of our next turn. So it's pretty easy to do. We just have to run over there. But uh, we also know that we want to get to Isla Obscura and deliver to Sugar. And there's no way we will be able to purchase to Sugar and get to Isla Obscura by the end of our next turn. So I don't think that one makes a ton of sense. And the last one right here says Bar the Way. Now, this one is secret, so we could go face down with our other one, and it says 
that we have to learn the ritual the maelstrom and then use it to remove any 1c route from the game now this is interesting because uh, as a reward you get 1200 gold and you get to add a c route so essentially you remove one and then you add one back down again but the only way to learn that ritual is to grab it at isla obscura now this is going to work out pretty well for us i think because we know we want to make our way over there and deliver the sugar so once we have done that we can then learn that uh, uh ritual and then go ahead and try to complete this one as well so this is a nice little plan that we have for ourselves we can now keep this one and obviously put them both face down in our area although i'll leave them face up for this video and then the two that we did not pick are going to go down to the bottom of this deck at this point, we have two more actions left, and I think we should spend both of those sailing. Now, when we look out to the broader map, we can see that Isla Obscura is right up here, and La Juanita is over in this area, and that's important because this is where we can purchase sugar. Now, fortunately, at the start of the game, we begin with 300 gold, and we can see that we can purchase sugar for 100 gold on this location. And I think we should head over there, and then we can double back over to this location, and then sell that sugar to La Isla to finish that mission. So with that in mind, let's spend our second action moving three times. So we could go one, two, three. Now at this point, you'll notice that we sailed right by one of these merchant ships. Now if we landed on the location with that ship, then we could flip this over and take a look at what its stats are. That would be its speed and its strength and what the reward would be for destroying it. But I think it makes sense for us to maybe go a little bit faster. Let's move three times and then we can move three more times going one, two, three. So with that, we have actually landed on the spot with one of these ships and it's a free action to take a look at this. So I figure why not? Uh, now if we look at the backside here, it says that this has a um, speed of four, it has a strength of two, and a cargo size of three, and you would get 600 gold if you successfully conquered this. Now we can also see it's worth one victory point if you defeat this one, and we know there is that Scourge of the Seven Seas life goal that does give extra points to the player, uh, to every player who is able to defeat seven ships. Either way, I don't think that's something that we want to be doing, and that was our third action anyway, so we have to finish out our turn right here, and that means that the green player can now take their turn. It looks like the first action they want to do is to sail. Now they have a speed of three, so they're gonna go one, two, and you are allowed to stop before you get to your full speed. And they figure since they're heading over here to St. David, they may as well stop on this point right here and take a look at this ship. And then for their second action, they're going to sail again, going one, two, and landing here in St. David. They can now take their third and final action, and it looks like that is going to be to sell. Now, when you take a sell action, you can sell as much stuff as you want to. We can see that St. David will uh, pick up a cocoa for 200 gold. They will give 400 gold for the sugar, and they will give whatever the gold is listed on a treasure if you sold that treasure here. Now, in this case, they currently just have two sugar, so they're going to sell both of those for this single action, and that's going to be 400 plus 400, plus they also gain an additional 200 because they have this talent right here. It says they gain 200 gold whenever they take a sell action, so that's 1,000 gold they just made with their first turn. Now, when it comes to gaining this money, we can see that they started with 300 gold. Uh, each of these copper coins is 100. The silver coins are 500, and these gold ones are 1,000. So they're just going to take that gold coin right there, and that's going to finish out their turn. So yellow can now take their turn, and for their first action, they are going to sail. Now, they have the same starting setup of three speed. However, they picked this navigator talent that says they have plus one speed when they are traveling. Now, that is important to note because you do use your speed for other things like fighting monsters. So they only get this when they are traveling, and that is what they want to do. So that means they can go four because, again, the current wind is at zero, and they will go one, two, three, four. Now this is going to land them here in this ancient shipyard, and you can uh, sail right through these, but if you land in them, then you can evaluate the bonus that is associated there. Now for this location right here, that means they get to roll this white die. Now three of the faces on this die are blank, but the other three faces give you bonuses. That might be extra upgrades, it could be 200 gold, or it could be an extra action. So for a free action, since they landed here in the ancient shipyard, they get to roll the die, and it looks like they picked up 200 gold while there. So they can add this to the rest of their money, and now they're going to take their second action, and they are going to travel again. So again, they can move up to four times, and this means they will go one, two, three, four, and now they're over here in the mangroves. Now you'll notice that this place also has a die on it, and it's somewhat similar. It has three blank sides, and then the other three sides are associated with the three resources in the game. Uh, that's sugar, cocoa, and rum. So they get to roll this die right here to see if they find something, and they found some sugar. So this has been uh, going pretty well for the yellow player so far. 
uh, we can see that they started the game with two cocoa, so they can now shift this last disc over, and they now have two cocoa and a sugar. At this point, they have one action left, and they're going to travel again. So it's just a very movement-heavy turn for the yellow player. They again get to go four, so that's one, two, three, four, and they are now in Port Royal. Uh, if you look down here, you can see that Port Royal will uh, purchase anything for 300 goods each. So if they wanted to on their next turn, they could sell all three of those for 900 gold. That's certainly something they can consider for their next turn, but for now, they are done. At this point, every player has taken a turn, and that means we have come to the end of a round. Now, the first thing we do when that happens is we are going to discard the top of these wind tokens and reveal the next one. So it looks like for the next turn, wow, there's plus two movement for everybody. So that means we could all be very speedy this round. And the next thing that we would do is we would replace any of these spots out on the shipping lanes with new ships if any of these had been defeated. But that has not happened just yet. Now, the last thing we potentially have to deal with in this end of round phase is dealing with pestilence out on islands. Now, this comes out based off of the Yellowjack crew member, and the pestilence simply says that no one can enter or leave that island as long as this is there. But at the end of that round, this flips over and that island is now immune to pestilence for the rest of the game. So I'll uh, show this one if somebody ends up actually using that crew member, but now you know roughly how this works. All right, we can now enter the second round, and the turn order never actually changes as we're playing. That means we will always start the rounds, and the yellow player will always end them. Effectively, we just all will go clockwise as the game goes on, and after every three turns, we just reseed the board a little bit. So with that in mind, let's now take our second turn. Well, we do know that we want to go over here to La Juanita to pick up some sugar so that we can satisfy that mission that we're working on. So for our first action, let's head two spaces over here. Our speed is currently three plus two or five, so we can easily make that happen. And then for our second action, let's buy some sugar. Now it's going to cost 100 gold each, and we have three empty slots in our cargo right now. We also start the game with 300 gold, so this works out pretty well for us. We can spend all of that, and we now have, it looks like, three sugar in our holds. And for our third action, I think that we should travel. Now, Isla Obscura is right over there, and we have a movement speed of 5, so we could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, at this point, you may be curious what this is right here in the middle. This is a fog bank, and it says that there is plus 1 strength for attackers on this route, and that accounts for all 7 of these spots on this route right here. So, uh, the central part of the board is actually a little bit more aggressive, but so far, everybody's been pretty nice. So, with that, we've now finished out our action. It's time for green to take their turn, and with their first action, they're going to look for treasure hints. Now you can see that the symbol for that is shown right here, and that can happen on every one of the six islands in the game. Now the way this works is they are going to draw the top three cards from this treasure hint deck. They will choose one and put the other two down to the bottom. So it looks like this is the treasure card that they scouted out. They can now add that right over here to their hand, so the rest of us don't really know what that is. And it's also important to note that there is a hand limit of three for each of the four different card types. So you can have three treasure, three missions, up to three rituals, and three of the pirate crew cards at any one given time. Green can now take their second action, and for this they're going to do a single upgrade on their ship. Now, there are three different attributes to your ship. You have the speed, which is the skulls on the sails. You have the cargo capacity, which is these discs in the middle. And you have your strength, which are the guns that get added onto the side. Now, whenever you upgrade, you have to spend gold equal to the next level that you're trying to go up to times 100. So effectively, that means if they wanted to go from 3 speed to 4 speed, then they would need to spend 400 gold. Well, fortunately for the green player, their first turn netted them a ton of gold, so they are going to do this. It looks like they have 400 gold right here that they are spending, and now we can look over here and see that these sails have these three skulls on them. So they can now get rid of these and then add this sail down, and it has four skulls on it. So they can put that right here in the middle of their ship so that everybody can easily see that their base movement is now four. And now, because they have so much money, they're going to do another upgrade. This time, they've decided they want to go from 3 cargo up to 4, and that means they once again need to spend 400 gold. Well, it looks like they are good for it, so now they can add this disc onto their ship. This means they can go ahead and pull this apart just like that, and then they can add this piece right there, and then add that right there with the blank side facing up, and then slide this right back onto their ship. So they are significantly more capable now, they've just liquidated a bunch of their money to be much better out at sea. At this point, the green player is now done with their turn, and this means that the yellow player can now go. Now, for the first action, they want to retrieve a mission for the governor, so they get to look at the top three and choose one. 
and it looks like this is the one that they want to take. Now, this is a uh, revealed mission. We can see the eyeball right there. It says, Letter of the Marquis La Juanita. Now, they have to defeat all of the merchants on the shortest route to La, uh, from Port Royal to La Juanita. And while this mission is face up, the markers on that route will not be replaced. Also, they get plus one strength on those attacks. Now, with that in mind, they've decided they need to bolster up their offense, so they are going to upgrade their ship. Uh, they have a current strength of three, so they're going to spend 400 gold, and that will allow them to put a uh, fourth gun onto their ship. So they can slide that right in here, and now they have a strength of four. At this point, they have one action left, and they currently have a speed of six, uh, because they have the three from their ship, the two from the wind, and the one from their navigator. But they're just going to go twice right over here and take a peek at what this merchant ship looks like. Obviously, they now have a mission to try and defeat this, so knowing what's on the backside will certainly help them out. They can now slide this back right over here, and their turn is done. This means we have now come to the end of the round, and as far as upkeep is concerned, the only thing we have to do is reveal a new wind token, and this time it's a minus one, so everyone's speed will be one less than normal. Well, it's pretty unfortunate for us that this minus one came out, because we're currently three away from Isla Obscura, and that means our movement is now two. So I suppose that means our first action is going to be moving two, and then our second action is going to be moving one, getting us to our destination. Now that we are here, we can reveal the mission that we have, which is boosting the sugar trade. So let's go ahead and deliver both of those sugar right here. And now we can either gain one upgrade to our ship or we can gain 1000 gold. Well, at the moment, all of our stats are at three, which means gaining an upgrade would be effectively 400 gold. So I think we should probably take the thousand gold. I mean, obviously, this also gives us a free action for that, but I don't think an action is worth the 600 gold difference. So let's go ahead and take that reward. So that's a nice shiny 1000 gold coin right here. And now we're going to take this mission that we completed and we're going to put it inside of our chest. So we can open this up right here and it fits nicely just like that. And everything that goes into our chest can never leave our chest. And at any time as a free action, we can actually put our gold in here. For instance, we could just put this right there and we would lose access to it. But that would mean that our opponents would not be able to plunder this away from us by attacking us out at sea. Now, another thing you can put in here are the uh, treasure cards, which makes sense considering the Tomb Raider life goal needs us to put three treasure into our chest at the end of the game. So, yeah, with that, we've finished out to that mission. That was a free action for us. At this point, we have just one action left over, and with that, I think we should draw a ritual card. Now, this can only happen at Isla Oscura, and if you remember, we have this other mission that says we need to learn the ritual, the Maelstrom, and then use it to remove one trade route in the game. Now, we can look to this deck right here, and you don't actually draw from the top. Instead, you can pick out any one of the seven different types of rituals that you want, as long as there is a copy of it in here. You can see there are three of each of these. Now, uh, we know that we want the Maelstrom, but I think it'll be fun to go through the other options now so that we can see what other types of stuff is in here. Now, first, we have Ancient Recall. This says you can steal a treasure from another player's ship. However, whenever you play these cards, which can happen on your turn or on another player's turn, you have to spend the resources in the top right corner. So this one actually costs one of your treasures, and it's going to cost one of your upgrades on your ship in order to do that. So you can steal a treasure, but it does have a significant penalty. Uh, raise the Dead right here just costs one of your ship's upgrades. So you downgrade one of them, and then you gain three strength when you're attacking a fortress for the rest of this turn. The next one is going to be Read the Bones. This costs two uh, resources of any type, and you can look at the treasure or the mission deck and choose any card as opposed to going off of the top. Uh, next up, we have the Hummingbird to Totem, which doesn't have any cost at all, and it just gives you an additional action on that turn. So you effectively have to uh, use an action to draw this, but then you can bank it for the future. Uh, we can move on to Summon the Kraken. Now, this one costs a uh, all uh, one of each of the three different types of resources, and this actually calls the Kraken, as you can see right here, onto one of the special spots on the board. And then you have to fight the Kraken by going around the outside by using your speed as well as your cargo size to your advantage. Now, I'll explain the details of how that works when it happens, and I do think it's possible considering there is a life goal all about defeating the Kraken and the Sea Serpent. So we can now move on here to the Power of Ick. Now, this one costs two resources, and you can take one upgrade of your choice. So that's certainly pretty good. And the last one is, of course, the Maelstrom. Now, this one says in the top right corner that we're going to have to roll the red die twice, and then we can destroy one sea route, and then the ships on this route will flee to the closest island. Now, you may be wondering what it means when you roll the red die. 
Well, here is that die, and three of the faces are blank. So you have a 50-50 chance of having nothing happen when you roll it, but then the other three faces show the three types of upgrades for your ship. If we roll it and we get this, then we're going to lose one of our strength, so we actually pull one of the cannons off our ship. This one will reduce our cargo space, and this one right here would reduce our sailing speed. So by summoning uh, the Maelstrom right here, we are uh, running a risk of losing two of our upgrades, but I guess if we roll this twice, then odds are good we'll only lose one. We can now add this right over here into our hand, and it is normally face down, but for this video, I'll show our stuff face up, and that's going to finish out our turn. This means that green can now go, and for their first action, they want to buy rum. Now, this is going to cost 100 gold each, and with this buy action, they can purchase as many as they want, and it looks like they're going to spend 400 gold, and that is going to get them four rum. So they can go ahead and spin all of these over. And now for their second action, they're going to use their 4, minus 1, or 3 sailing speed to go 1, 2, 3. And for the third action, they're just going to go 1, 2, 3 again. Now when they land on the spot, they are allowed to look at this merchant ship. And that's going to be where their turn ends. It's now time for Yellow to take their turn, and it appears that they are intent on capturing this merchant ship this turn. Now we know that they want to do that because they do have this public mission that says that they have to capture all of the merchant ships between Port Royal and La Juanita over there. So that's going to be this ship and that ship. And on their last turn, they landed on this location, which allowed them to take a peek at the uh, stats on this ship so they know how fast it is, how tough it is, and what its reward is going to be. Now with all of that in mind, they're going to start off this turn with their first action being a gunfight. Now this is where a player is able to uh, combat another ship out at sea, but specifically they're just going to be shooting at that ship and not trying to capture it. Now when you do a gunfight versus any ship, you have to have a higher speed than the opposing ship. At the moment, the yellow player has three speed, as we can see right here. And when we flip over this tile, we can see that this merchant ship only has a speed of two. So they were lucky enough to actually be faster than this ship, and that means they can spend their first action uh, doing that gunfight, and you are always successful when you gunfight a merchant ship. You simply put one damage down on it, and that will reduce the overall strength of that ship by one. Now, if a player is doing a gunfight versus one of their opponents, then instead they will simply roll this red damage die that I've already talked about, and it has a chance to knock out one of the capabilities of that ship. So it's not guaranteed to actually do damage when you spend actions gunfighting your opponents, but it certainly could be effective in that case. Either way, that is obviously not what has happened here. The yellow player has now done one damage to this ship, and we can see that this merchant ship has a capacity of two, it has a speed of two, and it has a strength of four. Well, that strength is now three, as we can see with this one damage, and we can see that the reward for capturing this ship is 600 gold. For their second action, they are going to gunfight once again. Uh, they are able to shoot at this merchant ship, and now its strength is two, and at this point for their third action, they are going to try and board this ship in order to capture it. Now, when you do that, you have to compare the overall strength of the two ships. At the moment, the uh, yellow player has four strength from their ship, and then that goes up to five strength because of this fog banks bonus. Now, at the moment, we can see that the merchant ship is at four minus two, or just two strength, so the strength difference between them is three. Now, with that number in mind, we can come up here and take a look at the dual track. Now this is going to show how this overall combat is going, as the two captains of the ships are trying to fight to see who will capture who. Now, at the start of a duel, we are always going to put this right in the middle, which is the plank between the two ships, and then we will look at the strength differential between the attacker and the defender. In this case, the attacker has three more strength than the defender, so we can move this one, two, three spaces over, and right from the start, we can see that the yellow player is at a huge advantage. The reason for this is because the duel will end as soon as this figurine goes to the point where one of the two captains falls overboard, so they are just one away from making that happen. Now the next thing that happens is each player in this duel will draw four cards from the top of the deck. Now in this case, whenever you fight a merchant, then the player to your left is going to get to draw those cards and play as the merchant. In this case, we are actually to the left of the yellow player, so that means we will get four cards and we will play as the merchant trying to defend that ship. So we can both get our four cards. And then we can each take our cards, and it looks like these will be our cards here, and now the player with the fastest ship gets to decide who will take the first action. In this case, it looks like the yellow ship is faster than the merchant ship, so they'll make that choice. After looking at their cards, the yellow player decides that they want to go first, and this means they can take the first action. Now, when you have an action, you either play a red attack card, or you can pass your priority to the opponent. Now, in this case, they of course want to play an attack, and that means they're going to flip over this card right here. 
Now we can see that this card shows a red side over here and a blue side over here. Now since this card is being played as an attack, we can ignore the right hand side and it looks like they are doing a high attack and it has a damage of 1. With that in mind, we are of course defending for the merchant so we can now look at the 3 cards that we have in our hand. Now whenever we are attacked, then we want to either try to defend or we could pass and if we pass then we would just take the damage. But unfortunately each damage moves this figurine once over in the appropriate direction so even 1 damage would be enough to knock the defending captain off of this track. So with that in mind, if we look over here, we do have this card. Uh, it says Throw Sand. It's only used as defense, and it says you can block any non-rigging attack. Well, rigging is one of the attacks that's really hard to block against, but this is a very good card to have. We could even use this right now to block this one attack. But if we look over here, we can see that we also have this card that if it was played as an attack would be a low attack, but as played uh, uh, defensively, it would give us a high guard. Now if we look at our other cards, we have another high guard, and we have uh, this uh, offensive card that says Faint. It lets you draw two cards and then uh, discard one of those cards. Now I think we should go ahead and play this one. In particular, it's better than playing this high guard, because we will have a chance to attack, and if we're able to connect with a middle attack, then this one would do three damage, which would really help things out. Uh, so either way, let's go ahead and play this one. It has a high guard, so we can put that right here, and that is going to guard us from this high attack. That means that both of these cards will now be discarded, and now we, as the defending merchant ship, get to try and attack the yellow player. Now at the moment, we have these three cards in our hand, and two of them can be played offensively. Now we can play either one of these, or we could of course pass, but I think that playing one of these cards is going to be a good idea. Now the first uh, seemingly obvious one is this middle attack. We could play this one right now, and if our opponent is not able to block it, then they would take three damage, and that would move this figurine back one, two, three spaces, and it would be right back in the middle of this dual track. Now that is important because this duel will end either once a, either captain falls overboard or once both players pass. Now that's probably going to happen once we've all played all of our cards, and when that happens, then the position of this marker on this track is going to dictate who wins. If it's in the middle, then it's a draw. If it's over here, then the attacker will win, and if it's over here, then the defender will win in that case. Now with that in mind, uh, we should also look at this other card we have in our hand. It says Faint, and it doesn't actually do any damage, but it says we get to draw two cards and then discard one card. So we would effectively not be gaining any cards, and our opponent would not be playing a card on us, but it would give us more options, and I think I like the idea of playing this. Uh, we could either maybe find another good defensive card, or perhaps we'll find another middle attack. That might allow us to use that one, and then try to pull out the defenses of our opponent before laying this one down and trying to actually connect with it. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and play this faint card. So let's draw those cards. The first one is going to be a single damage high attack and a middle guard, and the other one is going to be a double damage middle attack. Nice. Uh, well, I think this is pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and discard this one. And we now have our two middle attacks, and we have three different defensive options which are available to us. So we can now discard this one right here, and the tempo of the battle is going to go back over to the yellow player, who can now play an attack card. And it looks like that's going to be a single damage middle attack. Now unfortunately for us, we do not have a low guard. Uh, we have a middle and a high, uh, but we do have this throw sand, so I think this is the time to play it, because if we don't, then we would take one damage and the defending captain would fall off the plank. So let's put this down right here, and that's going to block any non-rigging attack. This is not a rigging attack, and you'll know it. Uh, rigging is just a specific card that says rigging on it, and it's unblockable. So with that, we have now blocked this, so these can now both be discarded, and we are once again in a position to attack back. And at the moment, we have these two middle attacks. Now, I talked about trying to play one of these to pull out the defenses of our opponent, but I now realize that if we play one of these and they defend and then they attack us, well, we'll just have one card left. And if we're able to defend with it, then we won't get that attack in. So I think that playing the feint was still a good idea. We might have found something like rigging or another throw sand. But in this case, I think we should just go ahead and play this middle attack. It could do up to three damage. And in fact, when our opponent looks at their cards, they then say that they're going to pass, which means they don't block this, and that means they must not have a middle guard. So that means that we will do three damage, so we go one, two, three, and we are right back in the middle. Yellow is once again on the offensive, and they have two cards since they didn't play one, to R1, and it looks like they want to play this two damage high attack. 
Unfortunately for us, we just have this middle guard right here, so we can't actually play anything, so we're going to pass. That means we're going to take two damage, and now we get to go on the offensive, and we have this one card, and I figure we should probably go ahead and play it. Uh, we'll put this one down right here. It's a middle attack. It does two damage, and we are pretty confident our opponent cannot block it, considering we connected with a middle attack on our last turn, and in fact, they do pass. So that means two damage happens again, so this goes one, two, and now we have zero cards left in our hand. The yellow player has one, and they are going to play it. It is a middle attack, so that does one damage. We have no cards to actually defend ourselves, so this is going to move once over right there, and then they're going to pass. So at this point, nobody has any cards in their hand, and that means the duel is over, and we can tell that just barely the yellow player was able to wrestle out a win, uh, since this figurine is just barely on the right-hand side over here. So uh, the the opposing captain did not get knocked overboard, but that merchant ship is still captured, and that is going to finish out this duel. This means the yellow player can now take this token right here. It's going to get them 600 gold, and it's going to be worth one victory point at the end of the game. So here's their 600 gold. They can take this token and put it right down here, and now they're done with their turn because they have taken all three of their actions. This means that the round is over, and normally we would refill all of the uh, merchant spots in on the board, but we know that this uh, mission right here says that all of the spots between Port Royal and La Juanita will not fill in until this mission is done. So this uh, C location right here is going to stay empty, and now we can go ahead and remove this token, and we'll see what the wind is like for the next turn. And this is interesting. Uh, we have a three, but then we have a blue die. Now the blue die is a bit of a modifier. We can see it has a minus one, a minus three, and a minus two, but then it has a zero, a two, and a one. So what that means is every time you take a travel action on this turn, you get to go three plus or minus some. So we will all have to roll the die every time we want to travel in this next round. So we can leave that right over here to remind ourselves, and now we get to take the first action of this round. Well, I think we should start off by spending our first action to travel over here to St. David. Now, that's good because we could sell our sugar for 400 gold there. Also, we have this rumor of a ship in a bottle treasure over on St. David. And we can see that right here on the card. So with that in mind, we have a base movement of three. The wind is giving us plus three, so that's six. But then we do have to roll this die right here, and it looks like we got a minus one. So that means we are at six minus one or five movement. And it looks like St. David is one, two, three, four away. So that's going to work out well for us. We'll go one, two, three, four, and we'll just waste our fifth movement. And now we're over here at St. David, and we still have two more actions to play. Now, before we take our second action, I think it's time to summon the Maelstrom. Now, whenever you use these ritual cards, it is a free action, and we can see that the cost is just rolling this damage die twice. So we have a 50-50 chance every time we roll this of not suffering any damage. So the first time, it looks like we hit our cargo, and the second time, we got a blank. So that uh, is relatively okay, I think. That means we have to kind of disassemble our ship for the moment. We're going to remove one of our cargo spaces right here, and then once we snap this back together again, we can see that we can just hold two pieces of cargo at the moment, but fortunately, one of, well, two of them were empty, so we did not lose any cargo with this, but the Maelstrom did hurt our ship a bit. The next thing that happens is we can have the Maelstrom destroy one sea route. Now, I think we should destroy this one right here, and whenever this happens, it says that ships on this route flee to the closest island. In this case, both of these are equal distance, so let's just send this one right over here, and then we can just destroy this sea route so it is no longer there. Now, with that, we have finished out the benefits of the Maelstrom ritual. It's now time to do another free action, and that involves completing this Bar the Way mission. It said we had to learn the ritual, the Maelstrom, and use it to remove any sea route from the game, and we have successfully done that, so we can now reveal this. It'll be worth two points to us at the end of the game, and we can see that our reward will be 1,200 gold, and we get to add a new sea route to the board. First things first, let's take that 1,200 gold, and we can add this right on into our chest. So we have now completed two missions. The last thing we gain as a reward is adding a sea route down to the board, and we have many different options available to ourselves. Uh, one thing we could do is we could attach uh, Sao Tome over here to the floating market. We could also swing this around and attach that one to the bay. Now, another thing we could do is connect uh, this right over here, but I think what we actually want to do is to connect St. David right here over to Port Royal. Now, the way we do that is we essentially swing this all the way over and then make that connection. So we can do that out here on the board by moving Isla Obscura right over to this spot. 
Of course, this C route is going to swing over here, connecting it still to Isla Obscura. This one is right there. And then we can slide St. David in right here. So we still have the same ship on the same route. And then we could slide that route there. So now in the future, we'll be able to quite easily head over here to Port Royal and pick up more missions. This also means that Port Royal is more connected to the rest of the map so that as we get those missions, we can uh, more quickly hopefully go around and complete them and then of course make our way back over. The last thing we of course have to do is move these flags around. So Isla Obscura is now over here and I think we can now take our second action of the turn. Now, as I mentioned before, another thing we want to do on St. David is try to search for the ship in a bottle treasure. Now, whenever you search, you actually do it better based off of your strength. And because of that, I think what we should do is spend our last two actions this round improving our overall strength on our ship. I'll explain all of the details of how this actual uh, treasure hunting works on our next turn when we are stronger. But for now, we can see that we have a strength of three with the one on our front and the two guns on our side. So that means the next upgrade will cost four and the one after that will be 500. So overall, let's spend those two actions, spending 900 gold. We can do that by getting rid of this and taking one of these back. And now we can launch these two guns into our side. And just like that, we have gone from being a strength three to a strength five. And this will help us when we are fighting ships out at sea, as we saw on the yellow player's turn. But this will also directly help us out uh, when it comes to actually finding those treasures. And again, I'll explain how all of that works on our next turn. So with that, we have now finished out our actions, which means the green player can now start their turn. And the first action they'll take is traveling. Now they have a base speed of 4 plus the 3 from the win token means they're at 7. They can roll the die and they get plus 1. So they get to go 8 and they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and stop here in the ancient shipyard. Now when they do that, they of course get to roll this white bonus die and it looks like they got nothing. Uh, they could have gotten an extra action, an upgrade or potentially some gold, but unfortunately they did not get lucky there. So they're now going to take their second action and they're going to travel again. So they can roll this die, and it's a minus two. Uh, so that's essentially three minus two or one plus the four, which means they can move up to five. And they're just going to go one, two, three, four over here to Sao Tome. At this point, they have one action left, and they are going to sell. Now we can look over here and see that Sao Tome is going to buy the rum at 400 gold each. And it looks like the green player has four rum in their holds. So they can sell all four of these for 400 gold each. So that's 1,600 gold. Plus, they, of course, have their Haggler special ability, which gives them an extra 200 gold whenever they take a sell action. So that's actually 1,800 gold for that single action to sell all of that rum here at Sao Tome. They'll go ahead and add that onto their ship, and they're done with their turn. It's now time for Yellow to go, and their first action is going to be traveling. Now, they have a base speed of 3 plus 1 for their Navigator talent. So that's 4 plus 3, or 7. They can roll the die, and they got a 2. So that means they can actually move 9 spaces with this action. And they're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and hang out here at La Juanita. For their second action, they are going to sell their goods. They have 2 cocoa and 1 sugar. And at La Juanita, they can sell the cocoa for 400 gold and the sugar for 200 gold. And they've decided they are okay with doing that. So once they sell all of this, that means they just made 1,000 gold total. So they can add that into their hold, and then for their third action, they're going to spend 500 gold in order to upgrade their strength. We can see that they were at 4 total, and this means they will go up to 5, which does mean they have to spend the 500 gold. So they now have 5 strength total, and that's going to finish out their turn. This means we finished out the round, so we do have to fill in any empty C routes. We can see that this is empty, but we're not going to fill that in because of this uh, La Juanita letter of the Marquis. However, this spot is empty, so we can now draw a new ship, and we can see that the new ships are red. Now, these are harder to destroy, but they also have much better rewards. So we can add that right over here, and then we can discard this to see what the next win token will be. And it's just plus one to all of our travel movement on this round. All right, we can now take our turn, and for our first action, let's upgrade our strength one more time. We currently have five strength, including the one that's right at the front of our ship, and when we add this in right here, that means we're going to have to spend 600 gold in order to do that. So we can slide that there, and we can somewhat easily afford this by spending there. Uh, we still have, it looks like, 700 gold left over, which is good, but more importantly, I think we're now ready to start trying to find our treasure. Now the first thing we do is bring out our personal treasure hunt board, and then we can add the treasure onto the spot right here. Now we know we are at St. David, and that is where this treasure can be found, and we can see that right here in the middle, it has a little 20 marker. 
Now that's just how hard we're going to have to work to actually find this treasure on St. David. And we have this other thing over here that says as free actions, we can spend Coco to get three movement on the treasure track. Now this is important because we are going to start right here on the first foot spot, and we can put this gold token here on the 20 location. Now effectively, we just have to go down this track until we hit 20 or exceed it, and every time we spend an action trying to find a treasure, we will move a distance according to our overall strength. Now we know that our ship now has a strength of 6, but we also know that we have this keen eyes talent that says we have plus 1 strength when we are searching for treasure. So what that means is we effectively have a strength of 7 for hunting for treasure, and with this action, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now you'll notice that we ended on a spot with this green die symbol, and that means that while we are here, we have potentially found some uh, goods. So we can roll the green die right here, and it looks like we have found a rum. We can track that by adding it right here to our cargo, and it's unfortunate that wasn't a Coco because if we had gotten that, we could spend that Coco immediately to get three more moves down this track. But either way, we now have one action left because, of course, we did one upgrade and we have done one hunting for treasure action. So let's go ahead and move again. We will move seven times because that is, of course, our treasure hunting strength. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And at this point, we're just one, two, three, four, five, six away from reaching our final spot. So next turn, we should be able to reach that with our first action and find this ship in a bottle. It's now time for Green to take their turn, and for their first and second actions, they are going to upgrade their speed of the ship. Now, for the first of these, they go from 4 to 5, so that is going to cost 500 gold, and the second time, they have to spend 600 gold in order to get that sixth speed going. So, they'll spend that as well, and with it, they can now add this plus 2 uh, Skulls uh, sail right to the back of their ship, and now their base speed is 6. For their third and final action for their turn, they're going to spend 400 gold in order to buy four cocoa. So they can add those onto their ship just like this, and that is going to finish out their turn. Okay, the yellow player can now go, and this turn is going to be pretty similar to the green player's turn. The first thing they will do is upgrade their speed. We can see that they were going three, so the next upgrade is going to cost 400 gold. They're going to go ahead and spend that, and that means they can remove both of these sails and put their four movement sail right in there. And then for their second action, they want to upgrade their offenses again. Now we can see that they currently have a strength of five, so that means the next one is going to cost six. So they will go ahead and spend 600 gold right here, and that will put another cannon over on the side, so it looks like they have a strength of six just like we do. And then the last thing they do is spend their final 200 gold, and that will let them buy two sugar. They don't have quite enough to completely fill their coffers, but they figure that is better than nothing. So with that, they are now out of gold and out of actions. This means we can now reset for the next round, and we don't have any C spots to fill in, because again, we don't fill this in due to the yellow player's mission. So we can go ahead and see what the wind will be like for the next turn, and it's going to be plus one again. Well, I think we should start things off, and let's go ahead and hunt for treasure some more. Well, our base strength is currently 6, and we can add plus 1 to that for our Keen Eyes ability. So that means we will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, with this action, although you never actually go beyond this spot. So once we get to this point, we have ended on a green die bonus. So that means we have found, it looks like nothing, <laughs> and then we have also successfully found this ship in a bottle. Now this is going to be worth two points to us at the end of the game if we still have it, and we can see down here that as an immediate benefit, we get to choose one crew or ritual card and play it for free immediately. Now if we ever sell this at any of the main ports, we can get 1200 gold for it, but I don't see us doing that. So this means that we can either draw a ritual card and play it for free right now, or we can draw a crew card. Now we already know all about the rituals over here that can be picked up at Isla Oscura, but down here we have the bay, and this is where you can pick up new crew for your ship. Now in this game, whenever you take the crew, you put them over here, and they are all one-time use cards just like these ritual cards, but if you look in the top right of these cards right here, you'll see that they actually cost money in order to play them. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look through these cards here and see if maybe we want to pick up one of these instead of a ritual. Now we can see right here that Yellow Jack costs 500 gold to play, and it lets you place a pest marker down onto an island. Now that is going to be these markers right here, and it will stop any ships from entering or leaving that island for the end of this round, 
but then this will get flipped over and then that island will be immune from this ability for the rest of the game. So we could potentially do that if we think one of our opponents is about to do something really impactful on one of the islands, but it is quite expensive. Now the next one right here is the Daring Cabin Boy. Now, uh, they actually cost zero money to use, and we simply take one resource of our choice. So it's pretty simple, and definitely not what we're going to take right now, considering we get to take this action for free. Now, the next one we have is the Veteran Sellsword. This one costs 100 gold to use, and we can see that we get to gain one strength until the end of the turn, or we may attack ships while they are in harbors until the end of the turn. Now this is important because normally you cannot attack ships when they are in one of these harbors. And right now we are actually in a island that has one of these merchant ships in a harbor. So that is an interesting potential idea for us. Uh, we can now move on and the next one is a Masterful Spy. Now this costs 200 gold to play. And this one says we can look at up to three merchants or fortresses and then return them face down to the same spots. Now obviously this would be pretty good to figure out which merchants we want to attack, as well as which fortresses. Uh, you can see that each one of the islands has a fortress symbol on it, and all of these give you 3 points at the end of the game, and 2,000 gold if you defeat it, but they are all quite strong. Uh, many of them, in fact I think most of them are stronger than we can even be as a ship, without some extra benefits from uh, uh, various uh, cards as well as uh, treasures. So we can keep that in mind, and the next one is the first mate. Now, they need to spend 400 gold to activate, and we can see that we can either call the Sea Serpent, or we can move our ship to the closest island. Now, the Sea Serpent is similar to the Kraken in that it's a large creature that's going to enter play, and then we can all try to fight it, and the first person to defeat it is going to win and get a decent amount of points. And I'm not sure if this really is good for us just yet, because when you fight those monsters, the main stats that help you out are your speed and your size. In particular, you want a big speed and a big size, and right now we don't have either of those. We are just very strong, and the uh, cannons don't really help us out with these crazy sea monsters. So we can now move on, and the next one is a Reckless Smuggler. Now, it's going to cost us 300 gold to play this one, and it lets us add a new route onto the board, or we can look at another player's hand and steal one of their cards. We can now move on, and it looks like the Scurvy Saboteur costs 600 gold to play, and it says you can remove up to two resources or one upgrade from another ship. Uh, you can never bring any of the attributes down below one, but this is a very potent ability, and it's very expensive, and we do right now have a free activation of one of these abilities. Uh, so with that, that is all seven of the options that we have available to ourselves from these crew. But ultimately, I think what we should do is go here into this ritual deck and cast the Power of Ick. We can see that normally this would cost uh, two resources, and we do have two resources, but we get to cast this for free, and it says we get to take one upgrade of our choice. Now, the reason I think this is such a great idea is because right now we have a strength of six, and we are just one away from the max of seven. Now, obviously, it would cost 700 gold to do that action normally, so by doing this, we can now upgrade our strength for free, saving ourselves an action as well as 700 gold. We can also see that as we add this into our ship, we have no more spots available to put cannons in. So we are, in fact, at our max uh, capacity for strength, which is 7. And in fact, 7 is the highest capacity for all three of the attributes. So we are a very strong ship out at sea, and I think we should probably continue to try and gain treasures, but we should probably also start to try and fight a lot of these merchants, and perhaps even our opponents. If we are successfully able to attack them, we can do things like stealing their treasure, stealing some of their gold, as well as potentially damaging them in a gunfight, although you can only do those gunfights if you are faster than them, and currently we are the slowest ship out here on the sea, even if we are the most powerful. Well, that was a lot of stuff that we just did for just one action. Uh, so now for our second action, I think let's just sell some stuff. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately, St. David does not want rum. You can buy rum here, but you can't sell it. But we can sell our sugar for, it looks like, 400 gold. So let's go ahead and do that. We can add this into our coffers. And then for our third action, I figure let's move. This is good for us because we currently have a base speed of 3 plus 1, and that is exactly what we need to get to the next island, which is Port Royal. And now that we've finished out our missions, I'd kind of like to get some more. So let's go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we have skipped over fighting this stronger ship right here, and maybe we should try to fight these. But I like the idea of getting over to Port Royal and maybe next turn picking up a couple of missions perhaps, as well as maybe some treasure, to then figure out what our next several turns will be as we sail around this map. The green player is now next, and for their first action, they are going to sail. 
Now their base movement is 6, plus 1 for the winds brings them to 7, but unfortunately that's just one shy from being able to reach the bay, which is their destination. So they're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 and land in this ancient shipyard. Once they get here, they will roll the white die, and it looks like they did not get lucky again. Uh, they will not get any benefits for that. So now for their second action, they will go 1, 2, 3, 4 and land in the bay. And for their third action, they are going to hire one of these crew members. After making their pick, they can add this back over here, and this will be face down in their area, and that's going to finish out their turn. It's time for yellow to go, and with their first action, they're going to travel twice onto this location. Once they stop, they can sneak a peek at this merchant ship, and then for their second action, they want to try and capture it. Now we can see that their strength is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and when we look at this merchant ship, we can flip it over and see that it had a uh, speed of 5, which is why they could not uh, do any gunfire on it, because the speed is greater than theirs, but the strength is only 4. Now, they are currently on this area right here, which is a fog bank, so that means that the yellow player is the attacker, and they get plus one strength, so they effectively have seven strength to the four of this merchant ship. Now, it's interesting to note that down below, you can see this illustration. It says that your lost mother is on this ship. Now, we all have family members that are scattered around. Some of them are hidden in ports as treasure. Some of them are trapped on ships, just like this one right here. And in this case, if the yellow player is able to capture this, then they will have found their long-lost mother. And each one of these family members brings in their own unique benefit for that player for the rest of the game. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We can see that yellow has a strength of 6 plus 1 or 7. And since the ship's strength is 4, that's a differential of 3. So that means, once again, the battle will start 1, 2, 3 spaces over. We are once again to the left of the yellow player, so that means we are going to play as the defending merchant ship, and we will once again both get four cards at the start. We can both grab our cards, and since we are playing as the merchant ship, that means we actually get to decide who goes first, because the merchant ship is faster than our opponent. If the speeds were a tie, then the attacker would get to choose, but I think when we take a look at our cards, we can see that we have a couple strong attacks, we have a feint to draw more cards, and we have another feint, actually. So I think let's go ahead and go first. Now with that in mind, I figure uh, starting on a strong foot is probably good, although if we play this high attack, uh, right now our opponent is most likely to still have uh, what they need to defend against that. So perhaps let's do this um, light, uh, slightly less impactful high attack. If they defend against it, then maybe we can play this one on the second turn and take care of it. So we'll put this one right down here as our offensive high attack. And then unfortunately, the yellow player will put this high guard down. So that is going to defend against this attack and nothing happens. The yellow player is now on the offense and it looks like they're going to play this rigging attack. We can see that it says it is unblockable. It does one damage and it allows the attacking player to draw one card. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because as this is unblockable, that means one damage has happened and the captain of the ship has fallen overboard. So this was a very fast duel in comparison to the other one. Uh, just like that, it looks like the merchant ship has been captured by the yellow player. This means they can take this token right here. And again, the reward is they found their long lost mother and they can uh, see that with this token. Now that's going to be worth two points to them at the end of the game. And if you flip it over, you can see that for them, for the rest of the game, their upgrades cost 100 gold less. This is the second ship that they have destroyed, and they can add this family member right here onto their ship, so they can continue to see the benefits for it. And at this point, we can uh, have them go ahead and play their letter of marquee for La Juanita. Now, if you remember, this one was face-up, and it said they had to defeat all of the merchants on the shortest route between Port Royal and La Juanita. Uh, well, at this point, they have done that. So down here, their reward is going to be one upgrade, and they get to take one crew card. So here is the crew member that they've decided to grab. And if you remember, you can play any of these cards at any point. It does not have to be your turn when you actually use these. Now, the next thing they do is they get an upgrade to their ship, and it looks like they have decided they want to increase their speed. Now, their base speed was 4, so that means they can add this right here, and they've effectively gotten 500 gold worth of bonus out of that. They were at 6 strength, which means if they had upgraded their strength, they would have gone to 7, and that would have been 700 gold worth. But they've decided they want to be a little bit faster. They're worried about the uh, action economy of that, and sailing around to places a little bit faster might be able to save them more actions than they think that extra strength will do for them at the moment. Finally, they can add this into their chest, and this mission will be worth 2 points to them at the end of the game. 
for their last action, they want to move. They have a base movement of 5 plus 1 for their navigator, which is 6, plus 1 right here, which is 7. So that means they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they actually don't need that extra movement. And it looks like both of us are hanging out here at Port Royal. At this point, we've finished the round, so we can now reset for the next round. Let's go ahead and fill both of these locations in now that that mission has been accomplished. Now, both of these are going to be red ships, as we can see right here. And then, of course, we have to reveal the next movement. And it looks like the wind is going to be adding no help to us this round. Okay, let's now take our turn. And considering we have no treasures and no missions right now, I think we should probably spend this entire turn drawing those up. So the first thing we'll do is try to find some treasure. That means we draw the top three cards from the treasure deck and then choose one of them. This first one is Raleigh's Spyglass. It's at the bay, which is just south of us right over here, and it will take 18 uh, searches to find it. Now, right now, our strength for uh, looking for treasure is 8, so that will be 3 actions, and the benefit down here says you get to look at another player's hand and steal one of their cards, and you can sell this one for 1,800 gold if you want to, so that is a lot. Now, the next option is the Silver Chandelier. This is only worth one point versus the two points of the previous one, and it says that it's at uh, Isla Oscura. Now, it's only going to take 12 uh, searches to find this one, which would be two actions for us, and it says you can hold up to four cards of each type in your hand. Now, normally you can only hold three, so this would definitely modify that, and it can be sold for 1,000 gold, although, of course, once you sell it, you don't have that ongoing ability anymore. Now, the third option that we have is finding our lost best friend, which is this uh, dog right here. Now, we can find this one at Port Royal. That's interesting. We are currently in Port Royal, and it will take 18 searches. Now, I think that this is probably the one we should go for. And that's because not only are we already at Port Royal, but once we find our best friend, it says right here that we may start our treasure hunting on the fifth spot of the treasure track. So that seems like that'll dovetail really well with uh, the strategy that we already have. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take this one and we'll put these two down to the bottom of the deck. And then for our second action, let's look into going on a mission. Now, this means we get to draw three from the top of the deck because uh, this is something we could do at Port Royal. And the options are we have a letter of Marquis Isla Oscura. So this one is similar to the one that the yellow player did. It says we have to defeat all of the merchants on the shortest route between uh, Port Royal and Isla Oscura. And the rewards are the same. It's an upgrade for your ship or uh, and I'm sorry, a uh, crew member. And it's two points. It looks like the next one is another letter uh, of uh, Marque. This one is between uh, Port Royal and Sao Tome. Uh, now, the third one right here is Tidings Sao Tome. This one says an official mission, so it would be face up. We get to travel to Sao Tome and reach the island by the end of our next turn, and that would get us 500 gold as well as one crew member. Now, all three of these are official missions, which means we won't be able to have two of them. Uh, remember, once you have any of these official missions, you cannot take another one. Uh, and I don't think we want to do this Tidings Sao Tome. Uh, it might be hard for us to get there uh, by the next turn. Also, we want to hang out at Port Royal and try to find our lost best friend. Now, when it comes to the other two options, uh, this one wants us to defeat all of the ships on the shortest route over to Isla Oscura. So it looks like that would be two red ships or a red ship and a white ship. Or the other one is uh, for Sao Tome down here, and that would be three ships along the way. Now, I think that maybe we should just do this one, uh, mostly because it'll keep us kind of close to Port Royal so that we can double back around and try to get another mission once this is done. Uh, I do like the idea of heading down here because Sao Tome does uh, uh, buy our rum at a really nice rate, but I think that the uh, Isla Oscuro one is better. Also, once we get over there, maybe we can pick up another ritual, which could help us out. So we're going to grab this one right now, and it'll be face up because it's an official mission. And then I figure we may as well spend our third action trying to find our lost best friend. So we can add that right over here. We are, of course, at the zero spot, and this says we need to put this down at 18. Now, our current strength is the max on our ship, which is 7, and then plus 1 for our keen eyes. So that means we will move 8 spaces forward. And unfortunately, there is no bonus for that spot, but we uh, should be able to go ahead and find our best friend on our next turn. It's now time for Green to take their turn, but before they take any actions, they want to use this one crew card. Now they're going to flip this over and show that it's the first mate. It's going to cost them 400 gold in order to play this card, so they will discard this. And then the text down here says they can either call the Sea Serpent, or they can move their ship to the closest island. Well, they have decided they want to call the Sea Serpent, which is going to bring this large tile into play. And then they can put this down onto one of the four special locations out on the map. 
Now they've decided to put it right down here, and the moment you do that, it effectively negates that bonus while this uh, monster is in play, and it's worth noting that the rules for summoning the Kraken work the exact same way. Now, once this has come down here, uh, the only thing that really changes is that that ability is not in effect. If there had been ships on this place, then that would be fine. And in fact, ships can freely uh, sail through locations with these monsters. But while they are here, they have an extra option of trying to actually fight these monsters. Uh, at this point, the green player has not actually taken any actions. So now they want to move. Now, the wind is currently showing a zero and their base movement looks like it is six. Now, all they want to do is go one, two, three, four, and they're gonna land on this sea serpent spot, and then for their second action, they want to start fighting it. Now, when it comes to fighting monsters, both the sea serpent and the kraken work the same. You're gonna put your token right here at the start, and that monster will be defeated as soon as anyone has moved their uh, marker all the way around to the final location. Now, every time you spend an action to fight one of these monsters, you will move your marker forward a number that is equal to the upgrade that is associated with where the marker was at the start. So we can see right now that the green player's marker is on the cargo capacity spot. That means they look over here on their ship and they can see that their uh, size is four. And that means they will move this token one, two, three, four spaces forward. Now you'll notice that they landed on a blue die icon, and whenever you do that, you're going to get out the blue die and roll it, and then you will move either forward or backward equal to the amount that was rolled. So in this case, the green player got a 2 here, so that uh, was pretty beneficial for them. So they will go 1, 2, but unfortunately they have now landed on the red die spot. So as you can probably imagine, this means they have to roll the red damage die and see if they took any damage, but it looks like uh, right now they are pretty fortunate. Uh, the die did not actually hit any of their upgrades. So with that, they have finished out their first action for this battle, although that was their second action of the round. Now they do have one action left at this point, and we can see that their marker is currently in the speed section of this track. That means we can look at their ship and see that their speed currently is one, two, three, four, five, six, and that means they'll move this token six spaces forward. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and they've landed on another blue die spot. So it's a bit of uncertainty here. They can roll that, and it looks like they got a zero, so they will not move, and they're, they're mostly just happy they didn't roll the minus one to go back on this damage spot. And at that point, they have finished out their third action of the round, and it looks like it was pretty successful as far as fighting the sea serpent. They got almost halfway around, and they're feeling pretty good about it. Now, while we're here, it is also worth noting that as a free action, a player can discard any treasure that they found to move five spaces forward with their token, and when fighting the Sea Serpent, you can spend 300 money in order to go forward once with this token. Now, that might be important when you know the speed that you're going to go uh, with the next chunk. Maybe you could spend 300 money in order to avoid rolling a red die or something like that. It's now time for the yellow player to take their turn, and with their first action, they're going to draw a new mission card. They, of course, get to choose one of these three. It looks like they're going to keep this one here and not reveal it, so it's not an official mission. They can put these to the bottom of the deck, and now for their second action, they want to get a clue about some treasure. This means they can draw three from the top of the deck, and then after looking at them, they're going to keep this one here and discard these two. With their third action, they are going to travel. Uh, they have a base speed of 5 plus 1 from their talent, which is 6, and that will easily get them over here to St. David, and that's going to finish out their turn. At this point, we can reset for the next round. We can bring out a new wind marker, and it's going to be another zero round, and then we don't have any spots to refill with merchant ships, so now we can take our next turn. Well, our first action, I think, is pretty straightforward. Let's continue to try and find our lost best friend. Now we have a eight strength when it comes to finding treasure. So for one action, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we're just uh, two away, it looks like, and let's use another action to get right up to that last spot. And it looks like there is a bonus on this location, which means we can roll the white die, but it looks like we didn't get any benefits, but that's fine. Uh, we can look over here and see that we have now found our lost best friend. We can bring them over, and they'll be worth two points at the end of the game. Uh, this is uh, this card itself is not actually worth points and is not sellable as a treasure. In this case, the reward really is just taking this token, flipping it over, and putting it onto our ship. So now we find treasure much better. We start on the fifth spot, so that combined with our massive strength means we are even more efficient at treasure hunting. At this point, we do have one action left, and I figure let's pick up another treasure. Uh, we're really good at uh, finding it now, so let's draw the top three cards from the deck. And it looks like the, the first one is finding our long-lost daughter. Now, she can be found at La Juanita, and if we look at the token for her, 
we can see that her benefit says that uh, when choosing mission cards, we would get to look at four instead of the usual three. Uh, well, that's certainly a nice benefit considering we are doing quite a bit of missions. Uh, the next option right here is Cortez's uh, helmet. Now, this is worth two points at the end of the game, and it's also in La Juanita, and it looks like that says you cannot be the target of smugglers and saboteurs. Now, those are crew members that can definitely mess with our stuff, which we don't like. And the last option is the Tears of the Moon. Now, this is worth three points at the end of the game, and if we were to sell it, it would be worth 4,000 gold. Now, uh, we could find this one at the bay, which is way down below us, and at the moment, I'm not sure if that really is the one to grab. I mean, that is a lot of gold that we could get for selling it, and just a decent number of points. But the problem is, we are planning on heading over there to Isla Oscura, which is at least kind of close to La Juanita, which is where the other two treasures are. So with that in mind, we have to pick between these two, and I think we should probably just go with uh, Cortez's helmet. Uh, our life goal does involve putting uh, three treasures into our chest, and if we find our lost daughter, that might be nice, but this is not a treasure that goes into the chest for that. So let's go ahead and grab this one here. At this point, we are now done with our turn, and that means the green player can go. Now, uh, they are currently fighting the Sea Serpent, and it is worth noting that you can leave and then come back, and your token will not move on this track. Now, in this case, they want to spend their first action fighting the Sea Serpent, and we can see that their token is in the size area. That means we can look over here and see that they are a size 4. Therefore, they will go 1, 2, 3, 4 along the track, and they've landed on a blue die roll spot. So they can roll this movement die right here, and they got a 2. Now, that means they will go forward two more times, which works out pretty well for them. And then for their second action, they are going to fight again. The token is now in the speed area, and we can see that their speed is 6. So they will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they'll just barely avoid rolling the red penalty die there. And then with their third action, they are going to fight once more time. We can see here that they are in the size area again. So they will go 1, 2, 3, 4, and they are just one away from defeating the Sea Serpent here. Uh, if they had 300 gold, they could spend that right now to go ahead and do it. But unfortunately, they spent all of their money on their upgrades as well as uh, filling up their ship with this uh, cocoa right here. So uh, that's going to finish out their turn, but it looks like they are pretty set to be able to defeat the Sea Serpent next turn. It's now time for Yellow to go, and they're currently at St. David, and with their first action, they want to try and find Drake's uh, Rapier, which is a treasure that is at St. David. This means they can pull out their treasure hunt board, and we can see that the rapier can be found at the 22nd location, so it's pretty far along, and then they can put their uh, main token right here at the start. Now currently their strength is 6, so with this action they can go forward 6 spaces. Now they're going to do this again with their second action, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they've landed on the white die spot, and it looks like they have picked up 200 extra gold, that's pretty nice. They can add this into their coffers, and then with their third action, they're going to go forward six more times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and they get to roll the white die again. Let's see what they get this time, and it's actually another turn. <laughs> that worked out really well for them. Uh, well, not another turn, another action, sorry. Uh, so they've uh, spent three actions, but they now have a fourth, and they figure they'll go one, two, three, four, and then stop right there. So in one turn, they've managed to do the 22 uh, steps required to find Drake's Rapier. That means they have found this. It's worth three points at the end of the game to them. Uh, we can see right here that they now have an ongoing uh, plus one strength when they are dueling uh, for as long as they have this. Of course, if they put it into their treasure chest, then it goes away. And they have the option also of selling this for 2,000 gold. With that, the yellow player is done with their turn, so we can reset the round. We can remove this token, and it looks like we're all moving a little bit slower this round. Uh, minus one, and we don't have any ships to refill. So let's go ahead and take our turn. Well, right now, one thing we want to focus on is trying to defeat all of the merchant ships between Port Royal and Isla Oscura up there. Now, we're probably going to want to go down over here because we have plus one attack on this fog bank right here. Uh, and these red ships are worth plus one point, but I suppose we may as well do that instead of going up here where we're slightly more likely to fail when we're trying to actually defeat these ships. Now, at the moment, we are pretty slow. Uh, our base speed is just three, and both of our opponents go a lot faster than that. Also, we have a decent amount of money right now in our coffers, so I think for our first action, we should go ahead and upgrade, especially considering the wind is really not that great this round, it's minus one. So that means we are going to go from three up to four, and that means we are going to spend 400 of our gold right here, which will let us put our four speed sails right down onto our ship. We of course have to remove the other two for the moment to show that our uh, base speed is now four. And if we take a look at our coffers, we have 700 gold left over. 
Now, I'm kind of tempted, uh, since we are currently uh, at a port, to just spend the 500 necessary to upgrade ourselves once again. Uh, going fast is certainly a good idea to be more efficient as we're traveling around, especially considering the wind is sometimes really not in our favor. Uh, and if we do this plan of uh, getting rid of these ships, we might come all the way over here and then loop back down here to La Juanita. It might be a little while until we actually have a chance to upgrade again. Although at, with a base speed of four, it looks like we could go from here going one, two, three, four, and we could hop up there as long as we don't have a negative. Uh, now I guess the negative could happen, so I should probably not talk myself out of it. Let's spend the money we have. So we'll spend 500, and that will let us add another one to our base speed, and now we get to go five, and I, I think that's going to be worth it. With our last action, let's go ahead and move. Our speed is five minus one or four, but we just wanna go twice over here and see what this ship looks like. Uh, we can of course fight it next round, but if we take a look here, it looks like the speed is six. That is unfortunate because that means if we fight this one, then they still are faster than we are, so they will uh, get the first action and we cannot use the gunfighting to try and wear them down. Uh, we can see here that they have a strength of 6 as well, and we have a strength of 7, so we have a slight advantage there. And then we can see that the reward would be finding our long-lost grandfather. Now, our uh, grandfather is uh, pretty nice because what he lets us do, if we found him, is whenever we visit an island, we can peek at the strength value of the fortress. If we find a fortress that we think we might be able to take, then we might actually invest the actions to try and do that. And when you fight these uh, fortresses, it's just like trying to capture the various ships. They just, in general, have a higher strength value, and they usually also have one or two tricks up their sleeves. Our turn is now done, so the green player can go, and it's no surprise to see them spend their first action to uh, go the one uh, space they needed necessary to defeat the Sea Serpent. So with that, they can take this off, and the Sea Serpent will go away. Uh, now, multiple people can uh, fight the Sea Serpent and the Kraken within one game. So just because this has been fought and defeated once does not mean we might not see more of them in this game. And now, they get to take a reward. Now the way this works is they get to choose one of these four bonus tokens, and the Kraken has the same set of tokens. You can see that it's going to be worth four points to them at the end of the game, which is pretty good. Uh, they obviously invested several turns in making this happen, but four points is probably going to be worth it to them. But another big reason they are doing this is because the bonuses on the backs of these are great too. Now this one is worth 3,000 gold. Uh, this one right here lets you draw the top two treasures from the deck and just find them. You don't even have to search for them. Uh, this one lets you do four upgrades on your ship immediately for free. And lastly, this one right here gets you 2,000 gold and one random treasure from the top of the deck. Well, at the moment, they're feeling pretty good about the amount of gold they can get uh, by selling their goods. Obviously, that won't be two or 3,000, but they've decided they want to take this bonus, and that's just going to get them two uh, random treasures from the top of the deck. So let's see what they get. The first one is going to be their lost son. Uh, now, this worked out pretty well for them. Normally, they'd have to search 17 times on St. David, but uh, they've just found their lost son when they defeated the Sea Serpent. And when they take this token, that is worth two points to them at the end of the game. And the ability says that uh, when they are facing the Kraken or the Sea Serpent, they start on the fifth space. Well, that worked out really well for them uh, if they're uh, planning on doing some more monster fighting, which I suppose is pretty likely. Uh, this does mean that this is uh, kind of not really a treasure for them, but they now get to put their lost son on their ship, and they get to draw another one of these treasures. And in this case, they have found a Cursed Mask. Now this is worth two points at the end of the game if they still have it. Uh, it has a immediate benefit when it is found of another player removes one upgrade of their choice and it is worth 1400 gold if they were to sell it. Now technically this bonus right here only happens when you raise that treasure up when you find it. So I don't think it's going to come into play right now considering they got this treasure as a reward. At this point, the green player has two more actions, and they have a base speed of six, minus one, or five for this round. So with one of these actions, they're gonna go one, two, three, four. Now they're gonna stop right here at the floating market, and that's just gonna get them a bonus of 100 gold. So they can add this right into their coffers, and then they're gonna take another action. Uh, they're gonna travel and go one, two, three, four, and end their turn in La Juanita. It's now time for yellow to go, and with their first action, they're going to sell both of their sugar on their ship, and they will get 400 gold for each of those. So that's going to be 800 gold total, and then with their second action, they're going to spend 300 of that gold, and they're going to buy three rum. They can load those right here onto their ship, 
for their third action, they are now going to sail over here to Isla Oscura. Uh, they have a base speed of 6, minus 1 right here, because they also have their Navigator talent. But that's easily going to get them the 4 spaces they need. And once they go here, they are going to reveal their mission. Now it shows right here that they needed to boost the rum trade by uh, delivering two rum over to Isla Oscura. So that is where they're at, and this means they can go ahead and get rid of both of those rum, and they have now finished this mission. That's going to be worth one point to them at the end of the game, and they can immediately take an upgrade or 1,000 gold. After considering their options, they've decided to take a strength upgrade. This is their seventh one, so they can slide that in right here, and that is worth effectively 700 gold to them but uh, versus the 1,000 that they could have gotten, but this is also a free action, and they like the idea of that action efficiency. So that's going to finish out their turn, which means we can set up for the next round. Currently, there are no empty uh, merchant spots, so we can reveal the next win token. It looks like we have a zero modifier with the win this round, and now we get to go. Well, I figure there's no time like the present. Let's go ahead and try to fight this red uh, merchant ship right here. And now our strength is currently 7 plus 1 because of this fog bank, and we know that this uh, merchant ship has a strength of 6. This means we have a strength of 8 to their 6, so we can start off two spaces forward on this dueling track, and now the player to our left is going to be the green player, and they will control the defending merchant, and it looks like both of us can go ahead and draw our four cards. And then, unfortunately for us, the other ship is faster than we are, so they get to decide if they want to go first or not. It looks like they have decided they want to attack first, and with that, they are going to do a one uh, strength high attack. We can now look at our hand to see if we want to defend. Uh, we've got this three damage high attack, but it is a low guard, so that won't help us here. Uh, we have an insult. Now, this one says your opponent discards one card at random, but this is an attack, not a defense. Uh, we do have a low guard right here, but that's not going to help us with this high attack. It is uh, quite potent, though. It looks like we drew a couple of these three damage cards, which is great. And then over here, we have throw sand. This one blocks every non-rigging attack. Now, we could use this right now to block this, but it's just one damage. So I think maybe we will pass and save this for maybe a stronger attack that comes in later. So yeah, that means we're going to take one damage, which means this is going to slide forward. This is going to be discarded, and now we get to attack. And I figure we should go with one of our two heavy hitters. Uh, let's go ahead and play this middle attack right here for three damage potential. Uh, that would be one, two, three, and we would just win if we were able to connect with this. But unfortunately, it looks like the merchant ship does have a middle guard. So that's going to deflect this attack, and now the merchant can attack us. For this, they're going to play an insult. Uh, that means that we actually have to discard one of our cards at random, so this is a little risky. Uh, we really don't want to lose our three damage attack, and it looks like we didn't, although we did lose our throw sand, which is a really nice defense. Maybe we should have just gone ahead and used it. This is going to put us back in the driver's seat, and I think this is going to work out okay, because now we can play this insult, and it's going to force our opponent to discard one random card, but they only have one card. So they will discard this one right here, and this means when it goes back to them, they have no cards to play, so now we can play this three damage attack. That means this is going to go one, two, three, and we've knocked the opposing captain overboard. This means we can now take this token, and that's going to be worth two points to us at the end of the game. And we have found our long-lost grandfather, so we can add him onto our ship, and he's going to help us snoop on these fortress tiles. At this point, we have two more actions left, so let's go ahead and sail. Now we've got a movement of five, and the wind is zero, so we can go one, two, three, four, and then stop right here. And let's go ahead and peek at this merchant. Now, it looks like they are one of the stronger of the uh, blue merchants, uh, the lower value ones. It's 1,200 gold if we are able to defeat them. Uh, they do have a speed of 5, which means they match us, which is great, actually, because if there is a tie, then the uh, attacker gets to decide, and they have a strength of 5. Now, uh, this is no longer in the fog bank, because just this strip right here is the fog bank. So we have a strength of 7 to their 5. So let's go ahead and attack that merchant ship with our third action. We can once again start two steps forward because there is a two strength differential, and now let's deal out four cards. Well, it looks like we've actually run out of our deck, so this means we have to shuffle up the discard pile, and we need just one more over here, and now we are the attacker, and we get to decide if we want to go first now. 
Well, when we look at our hand, we have two of these rigging attacks that are unblockable and let us draw a card. So uh, I think this is going to go pretty well in our favor. And let's go ahead and go first. So we will play a rigging and obviously it is unblockable. So we're going to do one damage and then we get to draw one card into our hand. It looks like we picked up an insult and then we can discard this and the merchant controlling player can attack. And it looks like they've decided to go with an insult. This means we have to discard one of our cards at random, and one of these is our unblockable rigging attack that would just give us the win. So we're hoping we don't discard that, and we didn't. We lost the insult. All right, so that worked out pretty well for us. We can discard this one right here, and then we can go on the offensive, and we're just going to drop the rigging right here, and that will knock this captain right overboard. So that was a nice and quick duel right there, and it looks like we're victorious. This means we have defeated two of these merchants in one turn, so that worked out really well for us. This is one point to us at the end of the game, and let's take our 1,200 gold as a reward. So here is that reward, and then we finished up our main actions, but we can take a free action to complete this mission. We have indeed defeated all of the merchants on the shortest route from Port Royal over to Isla Oscura, and that means we now get to take an upgrade of our choice and one crew member. This is also worth two points to us at the end of the game, and we can add this right in to our chest right here, and I believe this is the third one that we have completed in the game so far. Uh, now, we know that our life goal is to complete seven of them, so we are almost at the halfway mark there. Now, when it comes to that reward, I figure let's increase our speed. If we increased our cargo capacity, that would just be a 300 gold benefit. But going up from 5 to 6 uh, with our speed is a 600 gold benefit. Also, moving faster is nice. So let's remove this one right here, and we can slide this in there. And we are a very potent ship at this point. Uh, we are maxed out on our strength. We are almost maxed out on our speed, although we are pretty awful at actually uh, gaining and selling resources, it looks like. Now, when it comes to gathering a new crew member, I think we should pick up this veteran sellsword. Now, the reason for that is because both of the options here are good. Uh, we can gain one strength until the end of our turn, or we can uh, attack a ship that is in a harbor. Normally, we can't do that, and the green ship over here is very weak. Uh, they have just three strength overall, but they've been trying to end their turns in harbors so that they can't be attacked. But if we use this uh, cell sword and spend 100 gold, then we could successfully get an attack off on the green player, and I like having that option in our back pocket. Next up, we have the green player, and with their first action, they're going to sell three out of their four cocoa for 400 gold each. So that's going to be 1,200 cocoa plus another 200 because they have this haggler talent. So that's going to be 1,400 gold total. And then they're going to spend 300 of that gold, and they're going to pick up sugar. So they can add these into their coffers, and they now have three sugar and one cocoa. For their third and final action of their turn, they're going to spend 400 gold, and that is going to get them their first weapon upgrade of the game. So they've gone from three up to four, and they're still nowhere near as strong as their opponents, but they're starting to work their way up. Next up, it's the yellow player's turn, and for their first action, they're going to travel. Now they have a base speed of five plus one for their navigator, so that's six plus zero, and they can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and land right over here. It looks like for the first time in the game, all three of us are really quite close to each other. After glancing at this merchant ship, they have decided with their second action, they want to fight it. Now they have a strength of seven total, but they do also have Drake's Rapier here, and that says that while they have it out, they get plus one strength in duels. So they effectively have a strength of eight, and they can flip this over, and we can see that it has a strength of seven and a speed of seven, has a 2,500 gold as a reward if it's uh, actually captured. But we can also see that the yellow player is fighting on the fog bank. This gives them plus one strength, so they're effectively at nine to the seven of this merchant, so that's a plus two advantage for them. This means we can start with this two spaces over, and you'll notice that in all of these duels we've been uh, fighting with uh, this marker way over here as opposed to closer to the middle, and that's really just because we're trying to uh, find ourselves in good positions to have successful fights. Uh, it is possible to lose against these merchants, in which case uh, if we were right back here or over here, or of course if things went really badly against the merchants, and if that happened, then we would just lose one of our uh, upgrades on our ships, which certainly wouldn't be good. Uh, either way, they're going to start their battle off right here, and we are the player to their left, so that means we are going to control the defending merchant ship, and now both of us can draw our four cards. And then we get to decide if we want to go first, because we have a speed of seven with this merchant ship versus the five of the yellow player. 
So let's take a look at our cards, and we have a Throw Sand, which is a good start. We've got a single damage high attack, we've got a single damage low attack, and then a three damage middle attack available to ourselves. Well, let's go ahead and go first, and when you consider that we have two of these middle guards, I don't think we necessarily need both of those, as well as this Throw Sand. So let's start off lightly with this one damage high attack. Uh, that means our opponent now can look at their cards and try to defend themselves. And it looks like they do have a high guard, so that's going to block this. But they did spend one of their cards that could have done two damage, so uh, they definitely had to consider that. And now the yellow player is on the offensive, and it looks like they want to play a feint to start things off. So this is going to allow them to draw two cards from the top of the deck, and then they get to discard one of their cards. And it's going to be this one right here, and they of course discard the feint as well, and now we get to attack. We have this Throw Sand, as well as a single damage low attack and a three damage middle attack. And let's hold on to this a little bit longer. Let's do a low attack. And the yellow player is going to block that with a low guard right here, and now they can attack. And they're going to play this middle attack. It's a two strength one, which means if we don't block it, we will fall overboard. So I think it's now time to throw some sand, and that's going to block any non-rigging attack. So both of these are going to go away, and now we get to attack them. And we just have one card left, and it's a three damage middle attack. We can see that our opponent has only one card as well, so we hope we can get through. And it looks like they have a throw sand. Uh, so throughout that entire uh, duel, it looks like we didn't move once. Uh, both of these will get discarded, and unfortunately that does mean that the yellow player is going to win, because this marker is on the right-hand side, which is the attacker favoring side of this dual track. So they can now grab this, which will be worth two points to them at the end of the game, and they also get 2,500 gold. We can see over here that they have now successfully defeated three ships, and one of the life goals involves defeating seven of the ships. So they are working towards uh, that potentially uh, rather nicely. And it's also worth noting now, uh, when you consider how much money they have, that you are going to spend your money on your upgrades. But one big thing to consider is that you can also uh, get points for your money at the end of the game. Every 1,000 uh, coins that you have is going to be worth one point. So effectively, this is worth a point, and it looks like they have three points worth of money at the moment. Now at any point you can put money into your chest and you're never allowed to take it back out again but it will be safe uh, from your opponents coming in and trying to fight it away from you. Uh, so getting lots of money is good and obviously spending money on upgrades is a good idea but we are also effectively spending victory points by doing that. Yellow has one action left and it looks like they want to sail. Uh, they have a movement of six at the moment so they will go one, two, three, four, five, six and land in Port Royal and that's where they're going to end their turn. So we can now reset the board, and we can see that three different merchant ships were defeated this round. So that means we can pull some new ones off of the stack and add them over to the board. And now we can reveal the next wind token, and it's going to be plus two. So a very speedy round coming up here. So we can now take our turn, and I think what we should do is sail over here to La Juanita. Now the first reason is because we can try to find the uh, Cortez's helmet over on that island, but also we have an opponent over there who is significantly weaker than us, and if you remember, we do have this crew that lets us actually attack our opponents while they are on an island in a safe port. Uh, they're not quite safe when we have this card here. So with our first action, let's go ahead and move. Our base speed is 6 plus 2, which means we have 8, but we just need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in order to get right over here to La Juanita. Once we land here, we can use our grandfather's ability that lets us look at the fortress tile on this island. So let's sneak a peek. Now we can see here that it's worth three points at the end of the game if we successfully attacked it. And when you fight these fortresses, it works just like the duels that we've seen before. And it comes with 2,000 uh, gold. But if we look at the back, we can see that this has a strength of 9. Now obviously we have a strength of 7, so 9 is higher than ours. And every one of these fortresses has a special uh, ability going down to the bottom. This one says that each other player can remove one strength upgrade from their ship to increase the strength of this fortress by one. So that means that when you fight this fortress, your opponents can actually hurt themselves a little bit to try and make it even harder for you to go ahead and defeat it. So we have two actions left, and I do think that we should go ahead and fight the green player. Now the reason for that is because we can see that each of the players have two of these ship symbols that are associated with their color. That's because the first time each player is defeated by an opponent, uh, they will give them this token, and it's just worth two victory points. 
So that means in the future, if we defeat the green player now and then try to attack them again, the only benefit we will get is stealing some stuff for them. We will not get any victory points. So it kind of makes sense to try and defeat each of your opponents once, uh, really for the points, and then more times in the future if they have some really good stuff to take. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I do think we should make this attack so we can look at our abilities. Well, actually, the first thing we have to do is reveal our veteran sellsword. So we have to spend the 100 gold to pay for this uh, crew member, and it says that we may now attack ships in the harbors until the end of our turn, and the green player is certainly surprised by this. So we can see that we have the full 7 strength right here, and the green player unfortunately just has 4. That means that is a strength differential of 3, so we've really caught them unawares, and we can move this 1, 2, 3 spaces forward, and we are in a distinct advantage right now for winning this duel. At this point, we can now deal out the cards just like normal. And then we can look at these here, and since we both have the same speed, uh, which is 6, then we as the attacker get to decide if we want to attack first. Overall, our hand looks pretty good here, so let's go ahead and make that first attack. And I figure we have two of these high attacks and a low attack, so let's start off with, well, let's see what our guards are like. This one's low, this one's low, and this one is high. So yeah, let's just go ahead and play this one right here. That's going to be a low attack with two damage. When we look at our hand, it's looking pretty good for us. We did not get rigging, which would just instantly win us this duel right here. But we have a couple low guards, a high guard, and we have two of these high attacks. So I think let's go ahead and play this high attack first. Uh, that way we can maybe get out a high guard and then try to hit them with this uh, double damage attack on the next salvo. So let's put this right here. And of course, our opponent, the green player, now can defend. And it looks like they are able to do that with this high guard right here. So that means both of these cards will be discarded, but we did force them to get rid of a three damage attack, which is good. The green player is now on the offensive, and they are going to play rigging on us. So that's a unblockable one damage, which is going to push this back. And the green player gets to draw one card from the top of the deck. We can now go on the offense again, and I think we should play this high attack. We just played one on the previous round, and they blocked it, so they're less likely to be able to block this one. And this two damage would knock the green player's captain overboard. And unfortunately, it looks like they have another high guard. So they're going to play this one right here and block both of those damage, and now the green player gets to fight back. They've decided to go with a three damage middle attack, and this is a problem for us. <laughs> we currently have just a low defense right here, so there's no way to defend ourselves against that. So we're going to pass, and that means we take three damage, and the battle is not going too well for us at the moment. Well, let's go for a low attack at our opponent, and then they are going to pass when they look at their options. Uh, they cannot actually block this, so we've successfully gotten two more damage in, and now the green player can play a card. And it looks like that is going to be another 3 damage attack. This one is high, and the only card that we have in our hand right now is this Feint. So that means we cannot block this, so we are going to take 3 more damage. That's going to bring us 1, 2, 3 right over to here. And it looks like we are getting somewhat close to this side, and we certainly don't want to get knocked over. Uh, if that happened, then this capture would go the other way, and even though it's our turn, the green player would capture our ship, and they would take our points, and they would steal stuff from us, which we certainly don't want. Uh, so that means this is discarded, but fortunately, at the moment, the green player now seems to be out of cards, and we do have one card left. So let's go ahead and play that, and it's a feint. It says we can draw two cards and then discard one of those. Uh, obviously, our opponent won't play anything to this, so we'll grab two cards, and then these are actually the last two from the draw deck. So after this, we'll have to reshuffle this discard pile, and it looks like we have found an attack. Okay, good. <laughs> if we uh, just found, actually, if this was just a single value attack, we would still lose. But at this point, it's a two damage attack. So I think what we should do is play this, and we'll go one, two, and at the very end of it, it looks like we have finished out the duel on the middle spot, and that means this is actually a draw. So we have essentially wasted our action trying to defeat the green player. Um, when it's a draw, nobody gets anything, and we both go on our way, so uh, that was a pretty raucous duel right there. Well, we are currently still in La Juanita, and we know that our veteran sellsword lets us attack ships in harbors until the end of our turn, and we do have one action left. Uh, I think we should try and do this again. That did not work out the last time. Uh, the green player was able to defend, but uh, let's give it another go. Uh, the main reason for this is because if we successfully uh, capture their ship, not only will we get to the two points, but we can then steal half of their gold that they have not in their treasure chest, or one of their treasures that aren't in their treasure chest, or we can steal half of their resources. 
curses. Now, I'd really like to grab this cursed mask from them. Uh, as a free action, you can put things like treasure into your uh, treasure chest at any time, but it looks like the green player didn't do that on their last turn. They were not expecting to get attacked, and they were considering uh, potentially selling this one for gold. But uh, at this point, let's go ahead and attack them again and try to steal this cursed mask. Just like last time, we have a 1, 2, 3 strength advantage on the green player, and we can now reshuffle up that discard pile that I mentioned, and then deal out the four cards to each of us. And then we can go first if we want to, and it looks like we have a feint, we have a middle attack, a high attack, and a throw sand. So once again, we did not get a rigging, which would have made this uh, pretty quick. Uh, I think considering we have, let's see, two low guards and then a... Uh, one of these throw sands. Let's just try to end this. Uh, although I guess we just need one damage. So let's do the one damage one as a middle attack and see if we can try and uh, connect with this one. If unfortunately we skid backwards on the next round, then maybe we can end it there. So yeah, we're doing a one damage middle attack. And then it looks like the green player can defend with this middle guard right here. And now the green player can attack us. It looks like they're going to go with a middle attack right here, and we currently have a low guard and a feint and a throw sand, so I think we should throw some sand. This is going to block against everything except for rigging, so we can play that right there, and that means this is blocked, and now we can attack again. Now, I figure, let's go ahead and drop this high attack here. But unfortunately, it looks like the green player does have a high guard. So that's going to defend that, and we're not moving at this point, uh, but now the green player can attack us back. And it looks like that's going to be a high attack right here for two damage. And we just have this feint. So we are going to pass on that. And we take two damage just like that. This is now discarded. And uh, we're fortunately still on the attacker side of this dual track. And we just have this feint card left. So we're going to play that one. And that's going to let us draw two cards and then discard one of them. Uh, looks like one is a three damage. Oh, <laughs> they're both three damage attacks. So we can discard one of these, drop this down, and we know that the green player does not have any cards in their hand. So that's going to be one, two, three, and we knock the green player's captain overboard. Well, it was harder than we thought it would be, but we have successfully been able to defeat the green player. That means we can grab one of these tokens for two victory points, and I think let's just go ahead and steal this Cursed Mask. Uh, the green player is definitely kicking themselves for not putting this into their treasure chest as a free action on their last turn, but once again, they just didn't see us uh, coming over here and attacking them. Uh, they just did not expect that uh, crew to be able to do that. So this is going to go over here onto our ship, and I think at this point, uh, considering how fickle these things can potentially be, and how uh, similar our strength is to the yellow player, let's go ahead and use that free action to put both of these into our treasure chest so that they are safe and nobody can take them away from us. After all of that, it's now the green player's turn and they're going to start by traveling. Now they have a base speed of 6 plus 2 right here gets them to 8, so they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and land on Isla Oscura. Now for their second action, they are going to do an upgrade. Uh, it looks like they are a little bit worried about getting attacked now. They can see that the uh, yellow player does have a, a hidden uh, crew card right here. So they're going to go ahead and increase their strength. They're at 4, so they want to go to 5, and that means that they can spend 500 gold to do this. This means they can add another gun to the side of their ship, and now for their third action, they're going to draw one of these ritual cards. This will go face down into their area, and at this point, they've done their three actions. It's now time for Yellow to take their turn, and they are on Port Royal, so they're going to take a mission card. And it looks like the one they want to take is going to be an official mission. This one says they have to defeat all of the merchants between Port Royal and the bay on the shortest route. Now we can see that the bay is down here, and uh, the main thing that you can do over here is to purchase more crew members, and so they can put this face up in their area, and for their second action, they want to travel. Now they have a base speed of 5, plus 1 for their navigator, plus another 2 for the wind, so that is uh, 8 total, and they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and land over here. Looks like they're probably planning on then doubling back and trying to get to Port Royal for more missions, uh, instead of doing these in order. So once they land on this spot, uh, they're going to take a look at this merchant. And then after looking at this, they're just going to flip it up and spend their third action to attack it. 
we can see that it has a uh, speed of three and their speed is higher so they could spend actions to do gunfighting but they're not too worried they can see this has a strength of three and they currently are maxed out at strength they have got uh, all of their guns so that is seven plus they get an extra strength from this letter of marque right here so that means they are at eight strength total and three is the strength of this merchant so that is a difference of five and whenever the strength difference is four or greater then you don't even have to do a duel because it means that the other captain is just going to start the duel off uh, the uh, the track and in the water. So that means the yellow player has instantly defeated this merchant. They now get 600 gold as a reward, and of course they will get one point for it at the end of the game. At this point, we are done with this round, so we can now reseed the board with new merchant ships, uh, but we don't uh, put this one in right here because this mission stops that from happening while it is active. That means the next thing we do is reveal the next win token, and it's another two. So we can definitely all move very fast this round, and now we get to start things off. Now we are currently at La Juanita, and we do have a treasure that needs to be found at La Juanita, so I figure let's spend our first action to start finding it. Now if we look closer at this card, we can see that it can be found on the 16th location, which is going to be right over here. And then we normally would start on the one spot, but we have our best friend now, the dog. And that means we start on the fifth location of this treasure track. So we can actually begin right over here. So let's now get to digging with that first action. Now our strength right now is seven on our ship. And then we can add one to that with our keen eyes trait. So that means we have eight strength for trying to find this helmet. So we can move forward from five all the way up to 13. And now if we look at this helmet, we can see that we can discard a rum to get a free uh, movement forward of two. Now we can look over here and see that we are three away from finding this helmet. And we do happen to have a rum on board. So I think let's go ahead and spend this. That's going to put us two spaces forward, and the reason we're doing that is because uh, while we haven't reached the end, this will allow us to roll the green die, and we have a 50-50 chance of getting another resource, and a 1 in 6 chance of picking up another rum that we could then use right now to finish out this action. So let's go ahead and roll it, and it looks like that didn't work out for us, uh, so it was a one resource bet that we lost, and uh, now let's go ahead and uh, take another action, and that means we are just going to move forward eight more times, but we're just one away, so I guess it was maybe a little bit uh, silly spending that rum for that, but it would have been nice to save us the action right there, and right now we aren't hurting too much for money. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and find this helmet. It says that while we have this out on our ship, we cannot be targeted by smugglers or saboteurs, and we can sell this for 1,600 gold if we want to. It's also worth two victory points at the end of the game. And I think right now, let's spend our free action to just throw this into our treasure chest. It means we won't have this ability anymore, but if we look inside of our chest, that means we now have three treasures put inside of our chest, and that means we have completed one of the four life goals. Let's go ahead and look up here to remember what those are. Uh, this one up here is a, a reward for defeating seven ships. And right now we've defeated three, and it looks like the yellow player has defeated four. Uh, down here, the king's hand gives points for seven fulfilled missions, and I believe no one is particularly close to that one. Uh, Big Game Hunter will go to the person who defeats the Kraken and the Sea Serpent, and the green player has defeated the Sea Serpent already. And lastly, the Tomb Raider will uh, give points to the person who hides three treasures in their chest. Now, we are the first person to do that, so we can put this right over here, and that is 10 victory points for doing this first. Every other player can do that, but they will only get 5 points for it. And if you remember, we also have these secret goal tokens that show what uh, which one of these goals we want to pay attention to more. Uh, at the end of the game, if we complete one of our secret goals, then we get uh, plus 5 uh, coins for each one of them. So that means we just got 10 points plus 5 more, and our opponents don't even know that yet, uh, for completing one of the ones that we picked. Now the other secret goal that we picked at the beginning of the game was to fulfill seven missions and at this point we've just done three of those and part of me feels like it might be better for us to maybe try and chase this goal up here. Uh, we don't have a secret uh, picking for it but it is still worth a lot of points and we are very strong at this point and I think that that could be worth a lot of points for us. We just have to defeat four more ships and we are very capable of defeating ships at this point so maybe we should do more of that this turn. 
Now there is a wide variety of ships out here that we can choose to attack, and I think we should maybe head over here to this one, so that we are on our way over here back to Port Royal, where maybe we can pick up another mission. Uh, even if we don't get to seven, these missions are a good way to get points while doing other things, and I figure, since we are so strong, let's maybe try to target these blue ones, because we might just defeat them instantly. Uh, these red ones, we are likely to be able to defeat, but after the green player uh, was able to repel us on the last round, I am a little bit more wary, because it's obviously not a slam dunk if you have a 1, 2, or even 3 strength advantage as you go into those fights. So we can look here and see that we have a speed of 6 on our ship, plus 2 from the wind. So we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I figure we can land there, and let's inspect the ship. Now, as a reward, you get three rum, it looks like, and it has a strength of three. Uh, now, we have a strength of seven, so that's a difference of four, and that means we don't have to do a duel. That means we just instantly defeat this if we spend an action for it, and I figure let's do it. Uh, that's going to be our third action, so we can defeat this. Uh, it's going to be worth one point to us at the end of the game, and we have now tied the yellow player with four defeated ships. Uh, it's kind of a race now, essentially, it looks like, to try and defeat seven ships at this point. It's now the green player's turn, and they're going to start off by spending an action to sail over to St. David. Once they got here, they are going to sell two of their sugar, and that's going to be 400 gold each, plus another 200 gold total for their haggler skill means they will get 1,000 gold for this, so they can add this into their area. And then for their third action, they're going to buy two rum. So that's going to cost them 200 gold, and they can now load this up right here, and that's going to finish out their turn. This means the yellow player can now go, and they have a base speed of 5 plus 1 for their navigator, and then two more here, so they can go 8. And they just want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and land on this spot and try to defeat this merchant, because, again, they have a uh, public face-up mission that says they want to defeat all of the merchants between Port Royal and the Bay. So they can flip this over and look at it, and uh, they <laughs> can see that it's a two-strength merchant. Uh, now they have, it looks like, seven plus one strength from the bay uh uh, mission right here, so they're at 8, so that is a 6 strength difference, so they just instantly defeat this ship for their second action. That's going to be worth 600 gold to them, and a point. And then we can see that they can complete this mission right here, and that's going to be worth uh, 1 upgrade on their ship, and they get to draw a crew member from down here. For the upgrade, they are going to increase their sail value, so they're going to go from 5 on their ship up to 6, and that was effectively like 600 gold and a free action for them. And then they can look through this crew deck, and it looks like they're going to grab this one right here, and at this point they have one final action available to them. Now with this action, it looks like they want to continue with the race for capturing merchants, so they're going to travel one, two, three, four spaces. They can peek at this merchant, but they are now done with their action, so they can put this right back here, and now we can move on. This means we've reached the end of the round, so let's go ahead and refill all of these sea lanes in uh, with the much tougher red ships, and then we can reveal the next wind token. Looks like we just have uh, two left here. Uh, once we go through all of them, we'll just reshuffle the stack, and it looks like for the next round, we all get plus three to our movement, but we do have to roll the blue movement die, so that might be uh, greater than three or less than three. All right, let's take our turn, and I think the first thing that we should do is try to uh, fight this merchant ship. Now, we can take a look at it right now for free, and we can see that it has uh, four uh, speed, and we have six speed. It has six strength right now, and we have a strength of seven. So right now, it's definitely not a slam dunk to defeat this ship right here. We could spend actions to damage it by doing a gunfight if we wanted to, but our actions are precious because we are uh, trying to get up to the seven defeated ships on the same turn as the yellow player, if not before the yellow player. If two people do it on the same round, then they will both end up getting the higher victory points for completing that life goal. Overall, I think this might be a little bit too risky for us, so let's maybe do a different plan. Uh, let's start by moving, and that means we can roll the blue die, and it looks like we got a minus two. So we have a movement of six uh, plus uh, three minus two, which is going to be seven. And let's go one, two, three, four, and land on the same place that the yellow player is. Now once we go here, we can peek at this merchant that they looked at, and we can see that it is a five strength merchant. So that is definitely on the stronger end of things for these blue ones. And let's go ahead and try to defeat this one out from underneath the yellow player to force them to have to sail to find another one of their own. Uh, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and count some things up. They have five strength, and we have, it looks like, seven strength total. And with a difference of two, I think this is going to be worth it. 
So we can move this forward twice, and then we will get four cards. And then, of course, one of our opponents will get four cards as they uh, defend for the merchant. The merchant speed is three, and ours is six, so we get to decide if we want to attack first. And it looks like we have uh, just a bunch of attacks in our hand. We don't have any of the throw sand or the riggings or the feints. So let's just start things off, and it looks like we have uh, two highs and two lows. Uh, so yeah, let's go with uh, one of these single dam. No, let's do a double damage high. Uh, we're just two away from potentially uh, knocking this uh, duel out really quickly, and if they don't have any low guards, then this would be quick. Unfortunately, it looks like they do have Throw Sand, so that's going to defend themselves. And then they're going to play Rigging, which is unblockable. That means we're going to take one damage, knocking us back, and the uh, Merchant uh, player is going to draw one card. It's back to us to attack, and let's drop this high attack here so that maybe we can uh, connect with this double damage high attack after uh, bringing out one of their guards. But it looks like they are actually going to pass, so maybe we should have gone with the two damage one. This means they go back like this. And then they're going to play a 3 damage middle attack at us. Now if we look at our cards, we do have a middle guard, and it's for our lesser uh, strength attack, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's play this down to guard from that middle attack, and now we can go. And we just have this one card in our hand, so let's drop it, and it's a 2 damage high attack. And even though they have 2 cards in their hand, they're going to pass, and that means they will go 1, 2, and we will win the duel as that captain falls overboard. This is great because we've now taken this merchant out from underneath the yellow player, and we can see here that we got three cocoa by doing this. Now, unfortunately, we have been neglecting our cargo space all game long. Uh, we only have two slots on it because we lost one way back at the beginning. So we can take two of that cocoa, and more importantly, that's going to be worth one point, and it's one more towards the life goal of trying to defeat seven of these ships. At this point, we have one action left, and I figure let's travel. So we can roll the die, and we got a minus one. So we have six plus three minus one, and that's going to be eight movement total. And I figure let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, hopefully we can uh, go ahead and capture this merchant on the next turn. Uh, at the moment we have captured five, so this would be our sixth. And we can take a peek at it, and it looks like it has a strength of four, and it would allow us to grab two cocoa. That's kind of funny, we already are full up on cocoa, but uh, at this point we'll still probably uh, try to defeat it, even though we won't get much for the reward. It's now time for green to go, and the first thing they want to do is move. So they can roll the die, and it looks like they have three plus one plus uh, six from their ship, so they can actually move ten spaces. Now overall, they just want to move eight, and that's going to bring them through Isla Oscura and right into the middle of this fog bank. Next up, they are now going to prepare the ritual that they pulled a few turns ago, and it looks like this one is summoning the Kraken. Now the cost for this is going to be one of each of the three resources, that's sugar, rum, and cocoa, and then you call the Kraken onto one of the uh, special spots on the board. Now in this case, it looks like they do indeed have one of each, so they can get rid of everything but their single rum. And then they can go and put the Kraken right down here on the board. And then they can put this token right down here on the track. But if you remember, they found their long lost son right here. And the ability says they can start on the fifth spot of this track when they're fighting the Kraken or the Sea Serpent. So that means that they now have two actions available to themselves. And the first one will be uh, fighting this Kraken. The token right now is in the size area for their uh, uh, ship. And we can see that their ship is currently four. Now, one thing that they could do is they could spend this one rum to move forward once, and that would put them into the uh, ship speed area where they're six. Now, that would be a little bit better for getting around this track. However, if they did that, they would have to roll this damage die, and they would have a 50-50 chance of losing one of their upgrades, and it could actually be the speed that ends up getting hit. At this point, they don't want to chance it. They're going to spend their second action going four spaces forward because that is their cargo size. So that's one, two, three, four. And now they're in the uh, ship speed area and their speed is six. So they're going to spend their third action going one, two, three, four, five, six. Now at this point, they are going to go ahead and spend this rum. That's going to move them forward once for free. And that puts them into the sail area for the next turn. And it means they can roll this blue die, and it's a bit of a crapshoot, but it looks like they got a one. Uh, so that means they will move one more forward, and overall they're feeling pretty good about how that turn went. It's now time for Yellow to take their turn, and it looks like the uh, ship that was on their space is no longer on the board, so they have decided to move. Now their base movement is uh, six, plus they have one for their navigator, plus three more right here, so that means they're at ten, but they do have to roll this movement die, and they got a minus two. 
So that means they can only move eight. And it looks like they're going to be copying our moves because they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and land where we are. So they're chasing us. They're now going to take a look at this merchant right here. And after considering it, they are going to fight it. Now, this is going to be their second action. And it looks like they are really are just copying what we're doing. We're just chasing each other around, trying to complete that life goal to defeat seven of these ships first. Unfortunately for us, the yellow player is in the lead when it comes to that. And uh, we, of course, could attack each other. But then that would be really swingy as far as who wins. And our strengths are so close right now. In fact, we're both maxed out. And the yellow player would have a slight advantage there because they do have Drake's Rapier, which gives them plus one strength in duels. So they are technically the strongest people out at sea right now. So yellow is going to spend that second action trying to capture this merchant. We can see that yellow has a strength of seven and the merchant has four. So that's a difference of three. This means they can move the token one, two, three spaces over. But then, of course, they have Drake's Rapier, which adds plus one strength when they are dueling. So that's just going to be enough to knock this captain right overboard. And we don't actually have to evaluate that duel. This means they get the bonus, which is going to be two Coco, so they can load that right onto their ship. And then, of course, they get to take this token. Now, this is their sixth ship that they have destroyed at this point in the game. Uh, I think that uh, overall, their ships are uh, lower points than ours, but they are in the lead on that race. And they do have one more action available to them, and uh, they've decided to travel. So they're going to roll the blue die, and they got a minus two right there. So their speed is going to be six plus one plus three minus two which will be eight overall. And it looks like they want to plan to lock things in by going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they are hoping that we're not able to reach that spot and take this merchant away from them on the next turn. We've now reached the end of the round, so let's now refill the merchant spots in. Uh, we can put a ship right over here, but unfortunately with this prototype that I have, we have actually run out of uh, ships, so I don't have enough to fill this spot in right over here. And now we can go ahead and reveal the next win token, and it's minus one. So let's now take our turn, and at this point I'm getting a little concerned because it looks like the green player can likely finish uh, defeating the Kraken this round, and the yellow player is well positioned to try and take their seventh ship, and the game is going to end once three out of the four life goals are taken. Uh, now, we finish out the round in that case, but it's possible that this is the last round of the game. So I think that we maybe need to do a Hail Mary to try and complete that uh, uh, life goal of defeating seven ships. Now, in that case, we can look here and see that we have five, so we have to defeat two on this turn. And that means we would need to defeat this one, sail to another ship, and defeat that in order to make this happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this merchant. And unfortunately, its reward is not great. It would give us upgrades to our strength, but we're already maxed out. But its strength is only five, which certainly could be worse. So let's now spend our first action trying to capture this merchant. So our strength is seven, and this one's is five. So that means we have a uh, strength differential of two. This means we can move this token twice over, and then we can start off this duel. Uh, we will each get four cards, and of course, one of our opponents will be controlling the other player. Unfortunately for us, the merchant that we're going against has a speed of 7, and our speed is 6. That means the defending player gets to decide if they want to attack first. And it looks like they do, and they're going to open with a rigging attack. That is unblockable, so that's one damage right back over here, and then the uh, defending player gets to draw another card. We can now look at our hand, and we've got some pretty decent tools available to us. We've got a throw sand, as well as some pretty punchy attacks. And I figure, let's try this first. Uh, we will play a middle attack. It's three damage, which means if this connects, then we will just win this duel right now. But unfortunately, it looks like our opponent with their four cards do indeed have a middle guard. So that's going to guard against this attack, and now the defending merchant can attack us. And it looks like they are going to insult us. Now this says that we have to discard one card at random. So we effectively both lose a card, but we might lose one of our really good cards. And it's going to be this one. Ah, that's good. That was probably the weakest card that we had in our hand. So both of these are now gone. And now we get to attack again. In this case, it looks like we just have one attack. So we'll play this down here. And it's a two damage low attack. But unfortunately, once again, it looks like our opponent is able to block that with a low guard. And then they're going to come in with another rigging attack. Uh, this one is unblockable, and this is going to push us back right to the uh, tie place in the middle of the dual track. And they do get to draw another card. This will go into their hand, and now we have just one card, but it is not an attack. So we can then pass, which means our opponent can then play again. 
and it looks like they have a 3 damage middle attack, but fortunately we have Throw Sand, so that is going to defend here, but this is a draw. <laughs> we've uh, hit two of these this game so far, so we've kind of wasted our action, unfortunately. Uh, we are not able to capture that ship. Unfortunately, this means there's just no way for us to capture two ships on this round. Uh, we could potentially try to sail over here and attack the green player, but we've already defeated them and taken one of their tokens, so we would not even get points for that. So I think what we should probably do is just sail down here. Now our movement speed is 6, minus 1, or 5, but that's fine. We can go right here. Uh, I think that going after this unknown blue ship is probably a better idea than trying to attack this one again, especially considering the fact that it has two guns as a reward, which doesn't really help us out. Now we could of course sail up here and try our luck at this one, but this could potentially be a 7 damage attack uh, ship right here, and unfortunately with the Kraken currently in the fog bank, we would not even get the plus 1 benefit that we've been getting all game long when we fight in this area. So let's go down here where it's maybe uh, going to be slightly easier to get these points. We can flip this over and see that, yes, okay, it's a 3 strength merchant. Our strength is 7, so that is going to be a difference of 4, and that is enough to instantly defeat this merchant with our third action. And that means we do get 1 point, which means overall we just got 1 point on this uh, turn. So this certainly could have gone a lot better, especially when you consider we don't even get gold as a reward. We get sugar, and we are already full up on our ship, so... Not super happy with how that last round went, but that's the way it is. It's now time for the green player to take their turn, and they are certainly going to spend their first action trying to defeat the Kraken. Now we can look down here and see that their token is in the speed area, and their speed currently is 6. That means they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they have landed on the red damage die spot. So they have to roll this right here, and it looks like it has hit their sails. So that means they're going to lose one of their speed. And then they're going to spend their second action fighting the Kraken again. Now, right now, they are in the uh, cargo size area, which is four. So with this action, they will go one, two, three, four. And then finally, they are in the speed area. Their speed is still five, and they're just one, two, three away. So with their third action, they can bring this all the way over here. And with that, they have successfully defeated the Kraken. Just like before, they can now take a monster defeat token, but these will come from the Kraken's pool, and they're all with four points each, and they can look at the backs, and they've decided they want to grab this one right here. That's going to be worth 2,000 gold, and again, at the end of the game, every 1,000 gold is worth one point. So that's a guaranteed two points, and then they get to draw and take whatever treasure is on the top, which could be worth one, two, or even three points to them. So they will draw that top card, and it looks like it is worth two points. Now we can look down here and see that Blackbeard's hat would give them plus one strength when they raid fortresses, which is something that didn't really end up happening this game. This would also sell for 1,400 gold, but it looks like they are mostly interested in this one for its points. And they figure they may as well throw that right here into their chest. And they've decided to put all 3,000 of this gold into their chest as well. Uh, they're not um, in too, uh, a lot of danger from the yellow player, but they figure they may as well play it safe. They did lose a treasure earlier on because they weren't paying attention to that. The last thing that happens with this action is they can now go over here and put their marker on the 10-point spot because they have successfully hunted down the Kraken and the Sea Serpent. They are definitely now a big game hunter. It's time for Yellow to go, and they're going to start things off by trying to capture this weak merchant ship here. We can see that it has a strength of 4, and they have a strength of 7 overall. So that is a strength differential of 3, but then they of course have Drake's Rapier, which adds a plus 1 when dueling, which will put them to 4, and that means for uh, one action, they simply defeat this merchant right here. That's going to be worth 1,200 gold to them as a reward immediately, which they can add into their already very large pile of money right here. And now we can see that they have successfully completed the Scourge of the Seven Seas. This was uh, wanting you to defeat seven ships. They can put this right over here for 10 victory points, and they were able to uh, defend this away from us. Again, if two people did it in the same round, they would both get the points, and unfortunately, we were not able to make that happen. At this point, the yellow player has two actions left, and with the first of these, they're going to move. Now, their movement speed is 6 plus 1, minus 1 for the wind, so they can move 6 times. And they're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and inspect this merchant ship right here. And it looks like this merchant has a speed of 5, and a strength of 7, and a reward of adding 2 to your overall speed. Now, at this point, the yellow player has decided they now want to use this uh, uh, veteran sellsword. That's going to cost them 100 gold immediately, and then it's going to add plus 1 strength for them until the end of their turn. So with this, they have 1 plus 7 or 8, and they are indeed going to spend their last action trying to defeat this merchant. 
Now this merchant is at seven, so that means they are at plus one, but they also have Drake's Rapier, which adds plus one to their strength in duels. So that's gonna slide this one right over here, and then we can deal out the cards. So it looks like we just have two on the top of the deck right now, so we can reshuffle this discard pile. And then we can finish dealing this out, and since we are to the left of the yellow player, that means we actually get to play as the defender, and we get to go uh, second, unfortunately. The yellow player does indeed have a higher speed than the merchant ship. So the yellow player will start things off with a 2 damage middle attack, and now we can look at our cards. Now it looks like we have two high guards, we have an insult, and we have a throw sand, so let's definitely throw some sand. That will defend us against everything but rigging, which will stop this two damage attack. And then we can play one of these cards here. Now at the moment, we're just two damage away from getting knocked off, and I'm a little bit worried that we have just two high guards, which means we are quite vulnerable to more middle or low attacks. Now one thing we could do is insult. This would cause our opponent to discard one card at random, but I figure maybe we should go on the offensive. Uh, let's play this high attack right here, and if they can't block it, then that'll put us right back to the middle, and if they do block it, maybe they will use one of the attacks that would have gotten past our guards. In this case, it looks like yellow is actually going to pass, so they cannot block that attack, so we are uh, brought right back here to the middle. And then yellow is going to play a feint, which lets them draw two cards from the top of the deck, and then they can discard one. This is going to be the one they discard, and now we get to attack them, and I think now is probably a good time to insult. They have three cards in their hand, so they have to discard one of them at random. So let's see what it's going to be, and they no longer have this insult. <laughs> we insulted an insult out of their hand. So this can get discarded right here, and now the yellow player can attack. And they're going to go big with a 3 damage middle attack. Now, unfortunately, it looks like we just have a high guard. That means 3 damage will happen. 1, 2, 3. And now we can fight back. And I figure uh, we may as well just play this down. It's a low attack, so our opponent could try to block it. In this case, they are not going to. So this is going to go back once. This goes away. We have no cards left, and our opponent has one. So they're going to drop this one down. It's a low attack, and that'll bring this right over to here. And it looks like the yellow player is indeed able to defeat this ship. This means they will gain two speed upgrades, but they were already at six, so they can only gain one. So they are now at maximum speed. But this won't actually affect things because you don't get victory points at the end of the game for your overall ship upgrades. Now, the other thing they get is, of course, two victory points for this ship right here. We've now come to the end of a round, and we can look up here and see that three of these life goals are taken, and the game will end at the end of a round once there is a number of life goals achieved equal to the overall player count, which is three, which means that we have indeed reached the end of the game. This means we can now start counting up our final scores, and we are going to get points for defeated ships, monsters, fortresses, as well as treasure cards and missions, and rescued family members. We will also get one point for every 1,000 gold that we have at the end of the game, and we will get 10 points for having our uh, icons on these seals up here, as well as an additional five if we were able to achieve a life goal that matches up with the secret ones we chose at the beginning of the game. Well, we can see that all three of us were able to achieve one of these 10 pointers for the life goals, and we can show right here that we were going after the uh, Tomb Raider as well as the King's Hand. Now we only reached one of these, so that's going to be 5 points here, plus the 10 points right there brings us to 15. Now we can add to that the gold that we have in our chest, and on everybody's last turn they obviously would have put all of their gold in their chest, so we can see here that we end the game with 1300 gold, so that's going to be one extra point. And then we can look over here and see that we rescued two long-lost family members for two points each, and then the ships, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points right there. And then finally, we can count up the points on the missions and treasures in our chest. So that's going to be 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 overall right here. And when we add all of these points together, we end the game with 34 points total. Which means that we can now move over to the green player. Now they are going to get 10 points for being a big game hunter. And when we look at their secret goals, it looks like at the beginning of the game, they wanted to be a big game hunter. And they also thought about trying to be a scourge of the seven seas, but it looks like they gave up on that one pretty quickly. So that's going to be five points here, plus 10 is 15. They ended the game with just one treasure, so that's going to be two more points here. And then we can see that they defeated two sea monsters at four points each. So that is eight points total, and that's uh, almost as many points as we got for defeating uh, all of those ships. Now the next thing we can do is count up their points for their rescued family members. They indeed found their long-lost son for two points, 
and then it looks like they ended with 3,000 gold. And when they add all of that up, it looks like they are going to end with 30 points total. So uh, they didn't quite get up to our 34, but they were relatively close. It looks like when we stole that treasure from them, that was effectively the difference between us because it was a two-pointer. And lastly, we now have the yellow player. It looks like at the start of the game, they were hoping to be a treasure hunter with the tomb raiding and also the scourge of the seven seas, which is no surprise. That is the one that they got. So that's going to be five plus 10 points. Next up, we can see that it looks like they ended the game with 5,000 gold, so that is going to be worth 5 points to them. And then for the ships, they have, it looks like, 8 total at the very end there. They get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points overall for those. Lastly, we can see that they did find their long-lost mother, so that's going to be worth 2 points to them. And then they have 3 missions complete in their chest, as well as a treasure, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 more points there. And when you add all of these up, it looks like the yellow player has ended up with a whopping 40 points, and that is how the game ends. The yellow player wins with 40, we are in second place with 34, the green player is in third with 30, and that completes one full three-player game of Shiver Me Timbers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Overall, I was trying to have each one of the players do different things. Obviously, we started off trying to hunt the treasure down as well as trying to follow those missions. And the green player was trying to buy low and sell high to get a bunch of uh, money in order to upgrade their ship a lot. Now, right from the very beginning, they were planning on trying to defeat the sea monsters. And the way you do that is with uh, large ships as well as large sails, which is what they were gunning for. Although, I feel like maybe they should have invested more of their money in increasing their size so that they would have been more efficient with defeating those sea monsters. Uh, now, the yellow player obviously started off with trying to uh, defeat the overall ships, as well as going after missions, and we completed a few of those missions, but it seemed like the other goals ended up being a little bit quicker to resolve, and obviously with us, uh, near the last quarter of the game or so, we decided to shift things around and try to chase the yellow player for defeating all of those merchant ships. Now, it was really close there at the end. If we had defeated that last uh, merchant ship, then that would have been seven extra points, because we would have tied with the yellow player for for five extra points um, it, when it comes to that life goal, and then we would have had two more points from defeating that ship. Uh, so in that case, we were just six points behind the yellow player, so we could have actually won the game if we had uh, defeated that ship. Now, of course, there is a caveat there because technically way earlier in the game when we had a tie in our duel with the green player, we were supposed to end our turn. Uh, whenever you tie either versus the merchants or versus other players, um, you just don't get any more actions. So you should probably pay attention to that and make sure that that's the last action that you're doing on your turn. And obviously we were not supposed to have been able to attack them twice in a harbor on that turn because of that uh, slight uh, uh, misunderstanding of the rule there. Uh, but either way, I think the game showed uh, itself off pretty well here. I was able to uh, show pretty much every different mechanic in the game. I guess nobody went after any of those fortresses, but if there had been the life goal out that had been around destroying fortresses, then I'm sure that would have ended up happening. But either way, we saw a nice variety of things. Uh, the game was certainly not a short one, but uh, as you can see, just with the overall game, uh, when you're playing it with other people, this is not built around being a particularly short game, and I think that showed itself with this overall playthrough. So yeah, I think at this point, that covers everything I wanted to say about it. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.